The June 2019 meeting of the City of Scranton Zoning Hearing Board will now come to order. Will the Secretary please take roll? Mr. Palmatessa? Here. Ms. Newcomb? Here. Mr. Marks? Here. Mr. Gatton? Here. Mr. Chairman? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. In accordance with the Pennsylvania State Sunshine Law, this board shall render its decision on each case either at the end of each hearing or within 45 days of the hearing. If you are to give testimony in a case, please come to the podium, raise your right hand, and wait to be sworn in. After being sworn in, state your name and address and proceed with your testimony. Also, anyone given testimony who does not become a party to the case may obtain a written decision from the zoning office. I also have two announcements of law. If you are granted a variance or a special exception, you must wait 30 days from the date of our decision to obtain the necessary permits to start work. However, you may obtain a permit sooner by signing a waiver that any work done during that 30-day period is at your own risk. A favorable decision by this board shall expire 12 months from the date of said authorization in accordance with section 111I of the zoning ordinance. If you fail to obtain the necessary permits or do not comply with any or all conditions of said authorization, you must seek an extension. Is there any remarks? I have, I have some remarks. I wasn't at the last meeting, but I was at several meetings before that, and I did uh, watch some um, of the testimonies, and I noticed that in the past, especially last month, a lot of people that are coming to us from neighborhood associations speaking about areas that are not in their neighborhood, people are speaking uh, that are not 200 feet away. And it, stri it strictly says in our zoning ordinance that if you don't live 250 feet away, um, then you don't have any means, uh, any reason to come to the podium. And if you're the South Side or West Side Green Ridge Neighborhood Association, some, some something in West Side doesn't apply to you. So I, I, I think from now on we need to uh, stop people from talking that, that, that don't fit those criteria. Dan, I, I do some follow-up. I, I, I tend to agree with Ms. Newcomb in this. Sometimes we're open, I, I feel we're open up too far away from the, the project. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean this project. It, it, we, we see it more and more. Um, so, Dan, unless they have standing, should they be able to give testimony in a case? Okay. The ordinance says that the zoning board shall have the authority if it chooses to exercise it to determine who has standing before each case okay so that doesn't eliminate anybody it's it goes on to say it's city council the planning commission a budding municipality whose boundaries are within 200 feet and a property owner whose lots are within 200 feet and the affected city recognized neighborhood organization shall at the absolute minimum have standing so they absolutely have standing the board has discretion if they want to go beyond that okay. so we so, so it's like so like in the past when a, a couple of people can, spoke and i've said and right you, you can you guys can decide if somebody has standing or not if you want to okay, hear from them. I, I, I noticed last there, there is enough discretion in our ordinance okay and another thing um i don't know if the numbers two and four on the agenda one of them is not even notarized it's not a, it's a completely incomplete application you may have something more complete but there's nothing that goes with it i know they've been here before us but they were denied and now they come uh with a whole new application that's completely incomplete and number four also it's just a piece of paper and this is a business they want to open so that's another thing that i think that we need to crack down on is if you don't have your application complete then you shouldn't be allowed to uh, come to the meeting unless everything is all together okay um, that's all I have yeah, mr. I, mr. King mr. King I don't know if you have the original of number two we're, we're I have the original what I believe is the original of number 
two, and it does not seem to be notarized. So, so at this oh, time, I, I would make a motion that we that we don't hear this case because a, no, a notary is is one of the major things is is probably the most important thing of the application process. So I would like to make a motion that we that we postpone or file a continuance on an, at least number two. I, I don't see if if the application fee was even paid at this time. Yeah, it doesn't even it doesn't even have a paid. Yeah. So I, I know we've had some turnover in the office, so it's hard to put these records together. Correct. But Correct. What, what we have before us does not look like number two, and how about number four? Number two or number four have been notarized. Number four or is no, notarized. Or number four is notarized. But I'm there's sorry. no plan or anything that goes with it, so. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I would like to make a motion that we don't hear either of these cases, but especially number two, because we don't even know if it's been paid. And the notary is missing. What are your thoughts? Let's hold off before we get until he comes up and presents us. Okay, so I'd like to make to make a motion that we do not hear uh, case number two. I, number no, number two, yeah. Number number two is Rut Dennis Rutterwitz at 1413, 1415 North. Sumner Avenue. Okay, I'm sorry. What was the issue with the application? It's it's, it's not, not notarized. It's not it's notarized. No, it's not complete at all. There's it's, barely it's anything an on the application. It's an incomplete application. Yeah. He, he's here. This will be your, your third time appearing, um, as we know. And the first time we tabled it, uh, the gentleman, you know, we agreed to table it. The second time, it was voted no. So his next application has to be a brand new application to start all over again. It's not a carryover application. I did the application two weeks ago. Right. Do was you, it notarized? I didn't notarize it. I didn't notarize the first time. Well. It was, it was notarized the first time. Otherwise, we wouldn't. I didn't notarize it the first time. Okay. It's, it's your, your responsibility, and it says on the application that you are required to have it notarized. Your signatures and everything notarized on it. That's, so. Yeah, and it's not signed either, this application. No. Well, you didn't you didn't vote on that yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll like make that. a motion that we that we. Post I'll second this. it. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> yes. Correct. Right. I made the second. Mr. Palmatessa. No. Is a, a no. A no is no, word. Right. Correct. Correct. Ms. Newcomb. No. Mr. Marks. No. Mr. Gatton? No. Mr. Chairman? No. Vote of five to zero. We're gonna you're gonna have to get the, the application fully filled out and notarized. Any other remarks? No. <coughs> uh, Don, could you uh, attestment to the verification of the postings, please? I cannot. I didn't do the postings myself. Uh, member of our staff posted every one I'm told but number four uh, which would be 501 North Kaiser uh, DMC auto repair was not posted so Dan do we have an issue with it not being posted uh, we certainly do okay I definitely didn't see the posting anywhere yesterday You're here on that one. Um, I think we have to postpone it to next month. And I know that Ms. Newton said there was an issue. I'm not sure what the issue was with the um, It just, all we have is the front cover. We don't have any kind of a parking plan. We need to have all of that so that we can get an idea. It's, it's an existing structure. It just has been vacant. There's no change in the plan on it. It's reopened as it is that it was previously. I think what they're looking for is a plot plan as to where the cars would be parked, what, where the customer parking would be, where the cars for sale would be. Is it better for, I can have my client provide that today for when we come back or just have it for the next time? Uh, I would, as early as possible. As early as possible, get it to Mr. King, if you would. I can have it to the next time. That'll be yeah, fine. That'll be fine. Okay, so that is case number four, which is, uh, DMC Auto Repair Corp, 501 North Kaiser Avenue.
So that case also will not be heard tonight. Are we going to go into uh, old business now, Dan? Yes. Well, hang on. Are we going to are we going to table that as what we're doing? Do we have to take a vote to table that, or? Well, I, I think Mr. Lina just said we'll he'll go for next okay, next so month's meeting. So, do we need to take a vote on that too? I, I don't think so because it's it what it was our fault we didn't post it. Good. So we'll put it on next month's meeting. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. So, Dan, I guess we're going to go to last month's case. Correct. I am going to abstain from voting for a conflict of interest. And I, I too, am going to abstain because I wasn't at the meeting and I did not, I wasn't able to hear anybody's testimony. Yes, yeah, so we have two, uh, so that we have okay, three let's, voters. Let's bring a motion that we put, that we put it to a vote first. I'll, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Palmatessa made the motion. Did we or did we not, before we go forward with this, wasn't there stipulations that we came up with over this? Yeah, and, and they were explained at the, at the last meeting. But we, we put the uh, contingencies into the uh, record at that time there. All, all the contingencies are in there. So, so did we take a motion to vote on this yet? That's what you're doing yes, right now. I, I, okay. I, I second the motion. So Mr. Palmatessa made the motion and, and Ms. Newcomb seconded it. Mr. Penetar, may I ask a couple of questions before the vote's cast? Uh, I believe the record's closed, so. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we're, not, we're not gonna take any testimony, but not, do you have a question? My, my first question, it seems like the board has adopted or is enforcing a policy with regards to the applications themselves. I would renew the motion that I made last time, the objection to the fact that the application was not signed by a person associated with Sammy's Foundation. Okay, we, we already covered that at the last meeting. And then secondly, with regards to the abstention, there was an identification of a conflict of interest. Um, did Mr. Walsh state that he had a conflict of interest? Is that what, is that That's what, I what he said, yes. Is he at liberty to disclose the conflict and, and or to disclose whether or not he participated in the deliberations on the matter? Mr. Walsh, do you are you at liberty to disclose the? No. Okay. Did he participate in any deliberations of the? Uh, we no, didn't have any. They didn't have any deliberations. Thank you. Ready for a vote? So we can vote whether we're going to vote. Okay. Uh, now. We did. Before we do that. Yeah. I think there were some stipulations that were put on last time, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, the stipulations I had written down that this would be an inpatient unit with no more than 30 residents. It would be a lockdown that if any resident leaves, they must be accompanied by a counselor or within a fenced area, that no drugs would be dispensed other than doctor ordered prescriptions, and it would not be an outpatient treatment facility of any type. We, they, are they the stipulations that we all? Side? 30 residents. Yeah, 30 residents. Like they have no. a different LLC that's immaterial. No, no. To be run by Lakeside. The representation is that Sammy has nothing to do with this facility and that the operation is going to be run by Lakeside. What we would say, those stipulate yes, and I understand this question, we do want to answer it so we're not hiding anything. Whoever is licensed for that facility, we understand that these conditions run with your approval, no matter who it is at any time, and it's not Sammy's. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I believe it is Lakeside going to be running it, but if for some reason they had a different LLC that was running it, yeah. these run with that condition. There's no. No moving away from that. We're not trying to do that. We, we've agreed. It, I think we've even offered those stipulations. It, it goes with the property, not the Correct. operator. And then yeah. the, with regards to the representation of a lockdown, can, can somebody pro provide some instruction as to what a lockdown means? I, 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 Mr. Mr. Printer, we, we heard all this yeah, for thought, six hours already. We're, yeah. we're ready to vote on this. The stipulations, and Dan, I just want clarity on the one stipulation that we did put on. It was that no drugs be dispensed to anyone outside that facility, outside the 30 residents. Well, other other than doctor ordered prescription drugs for the no, people. I'm talking about no one can come come there to receive 
okay. drugs at all. So any drugs dispensed by yes. in-house would be in-house only, Correct. not a treatment that's, facility that's for outpatient. That's okay. I'll add that. I'll add that in the language. I, that was that was in there last time, but we're ready to vote with so, the stipulations. Go ahead. You ready, Mr. Palmatessa? First, yeah. Mr. Palmatessa. Yes. Mr. Marks. No. I got to stop. So do we take a vote on whether we can vote yet? Do we ever get to that? We had a motion. We made the second. motion in a second that we can and vote. We never voted on it. Oh, all right. So Go ahead and vote on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's no. okay. But I want to make that motion again that we vote. Make a mo motion that we vote. I second the motion. On what? On, the, on whether on the we issue. can vote with with the stipulations. On whether we can vote with the stipulations. We're we're going to take a vote on this with the stipulations. Yes. And I second that. Right, Mr. Penitar, I'm sorry to bother you again, but Mrs. Newton. Second. Is she voting on this matter? I'm not voting on this matter. She's not voting I'm on this matter. I'm just seconding it so that we can vote. Should we have a, a, a second vote. from one of the two over there? Second. Okay. All right. All right. Now let's go. Just the three of us again. Yes. Mr. Palmatessa? Yes. Mr. Marks? No. Mr. Gatton? This is, now let's get clarity here because I think this we're a little off. Again, this is just to initiate. Okay, we're going to do it right. You can moan and groan all you want. We're going to do it right. This is to initiate the vote. This is just to vote. Oh, this we're on the vote now? No, no, just to initiate the vote. To initiate the vote. So yes. Let's, let's open that door again, please, and take okay, a vote. Okay, let's again. do it again. This is to initiate the vote. Do you need the motion and the... The motion with the stipulations. Bob, make a motion with the stipulations. I second it. Okay, so now, Bob? Yes. 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 Okay. Now we're taking the vote on the issue. Okay. I made the motion. No, you're, you're, you just have to vote now. <laughs> Mr. Palmatessa. Yes. Mr. Marks. No. Mr. Gattins. No. And I explain my vote before everyone, you know, we get out of here. Uh, I listened to testimony for six hours. I've actually watched it on YouTube because this was the most intense case that ever came before me on this board in the three, three and a half years I'm here. Uh, and it was hard to separate your personal feelings from this because that's what came into this case. The need and not my neighborhood. And it was just tough to separate that down, but after researching everything that I did, I, I just felt that it did not meet the requirements for a special exception. And some of the testimony just went back and forth on answers and it just left that gap open for me to, to vote no on this. So, as I said, I vote no in this case. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. A, a vote of two to one, it is denied. Thank you. Please call the next case. Number one on the agenda is Arsenio Velez, five. All right, Don, maybe we'll give it like one minute for everybody to disperse. There's, there's your plot plan. Thanks, Thank you. Next month. See you next month. Okay. Sign that bottom of the application. Oh, yeah. Kurt. No, no, no. This oh, is not oh, for oh, that, okay, that, okay, you already have, well, a, I have, you have a completed there. application from theirs. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. There was no plan. There was no plan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was notarized and everything. So that's what Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Don, can we uh, please call the first case, please? Number one on the agenda is Arsenio Velez, 543, 545 4th Avenue. Applicant seeks variance to open the property for three units in an R2 zone. Is Mr. Velez here? Anybody from? Guys, can we please quiet down out there, please? Will you uh, please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Arsenio Velez, 113 Cabin Ridge Road, Holy PA, 18428. Cabin Ridge Road, Holy PA, 18428. You may proceed. Um, I'm seeking variance um, on the property that I that we're working on right now. It was a two-family with a commercial storefront, and we're just trying to change it into a three-family. Put the commercial storefront into uh, the third family. Yeah, that doesn't sound like that sound. This, can you this, your this is, yeah. This, no problem. Just check and make sure it's on. Okay. Okay, got it. <laughs> no problem. Dan, I have a question. Yes. When we look at this as a two unit and a single family, do we need parking for the single family? The single family has parking on the right hand side. Yeah, it, has the single its own, family. it has its own driveway. Right, that's all it needs for the single family. Do we need any though? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Thank you. It's the. The th yeah, it, it's a it's a two unit now, and you wish to make it it's into a two three. unit, and it also had a commercial storefront. So, so I'm, just, I'm just looking to turn its commercial storefront into another unit. That's all. Okay. So we're going to have three in units one in the one building. Correct. And then the single family. No, the the, the two fa the single family is separate by itself. Okay. It's its own entity. Okay. What's what's, what's the address of that? That's five forty nine Fourth okay. Avenue. Okay, because that's. That's not on the application. We just have 543. Yeah, that's 543, 543, 545 okay. is the only thing I'm here for variance. Okay, so they're two separate properties. I just purchased them together. Oh, so you do own for 549? They're together. Yes. Oh, so, okay. So that explains the driveway situation. Yes, we were just trying to show it so you knew that the single family was it also going into right. that driveway. That it had its own. What's that? So what exactly was your plan for for the parking for the the apartments? The parking we were going to do the the side by side going in. Um, we have we're going to have six spots. Plus we also have a drive. We also have a garage in the back. The the driveway that sits in between them. Yes. Is your measurement 18 feet from building to building? From building to building, correct. That's yeah, that's you, you not enough have, room you, to back out. You don't have room to back out to put your parking spots there. Your parking spots are nine by 18. Uh huh. Your, so what he's saying is that your driveway width-wise is the length that a parking spot is supposed to be. So there's no room to back out. And you have them going in diagonal and uh -huh. then backing out onto the main road. When we so were what there, about coming in straight forward? Mm. What's the plan for that garage? What's the plan for that That's garage? The length of the garage? No, what's the plan for it? Is it staying or is it coming down? It's staying. Okay. The garage is also staying. Now, let me ask you a question about the dumpster that, that's in there. Is that, is that for? We were, we were finishing up 549, which I had all the permits for. Yeah, I, that's, I saw Yeah, that. that's what we were working on over there, yes. So you want to use the driveway for 549 as right. extra, as additional spots right. for 543, 545? No, 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 I no. was just showing it that it was okay. its own yeah. entity. One. So you didn't think that any of the parking was for 549 also? So if you put one in the Okay, because I mean you have it on here, so it just looks like you were planning to use it as parking. No. What do we need? Eighteen. Yeah, but it's not stacking if you can get out. Then you use twenty one feet. So that they have to open it. It's a house because he has that little bit of a garage. What do you need to stack them? Do you know what the length of that driveway is? It's about probably 120 feet. Okay. 
It's the length of the property. It goes all the way from one end to the street. But how, how long is it? I'm looking at the 80 feet they have marked there on, on the 549. Is that the same measurement on, for 543 and 545? Would you say is that a safe assessment? Um, yeah, I would say it's so. Actually, alongside the house, we'll say you have 80 feet, and the rest is the rest is open after that to go where you can get into that garage or the backyard. Yes, okay. it has its own in the back. Yes. Well, my concern is I, I I don't I don't think you have the parking in that driveway. I mean, if it's only 18 feet wide, and if you're angling the cars in that way, um, you're backing out. And we're looking at different ways of doing it. If we're looking at your parking diagram here, and that's what we're discussing up here. And mm -hmm. unless uh, you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sean. Jump in. I was just going to ask Dan. Uh, okay. I, I know we can't stack Dan, but if he was to park to the left side of the driveway and he still had the the access, yeah, I, the, the I, back. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm looking at it. It's at least a hundred feet in length. So if you go parallel, you know. Correct. One one after another. You could get four cars in there plus one in the garage would give you the five cars. So uh, two on each side, one against just, one? No, against one here, just, just four right against uh, the house at 420 yeah. or four, 545. There. You could put four right against that house. Right, cause he'd need 21 feet How for each space, right? He, Am I correct? He on needs that? 18, 18. How many spots does Even he need? Nine by eighteen, so it's eight, it would be eighteen That's long. I thought. So it's gonna get you seventy-two. So it would have eight. He has a room if he utilizes the garage. He, he, he definitely has room for four parallel parking plus one in the garage. Also, how, do you know how wide that space is on the other side of the house? That's just grass right now. Do I know what? How wide that is? Which which space are you talking? On the about? other side of the house, with, where the driveway isn't. Oh, you're that leads you to the backyard? Yeah, I'm not sure it, whose that is property line-wise. I have no Oh, so clue. you don't know whose property Yeah, you're talking about the one to the left-hand side. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say, if you pave, put pave that, you could make that Yeah, I'm not, I haven't looked it up. I haven't even checked it yet since the purchase to find out even if that is. So that you need not, to get I think it's just an easement, actually. Do you understand how we said park them straight? Yes, I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yep. Okay. Well, it, if we look at, I, I just want to make sure we're doing everything right here because with that, if he parks in parallel, he still needs a 12-foot aisle. Then at 18 feet, he's not going to have that. True, he'd only have an eight, a 9-foot aisle. So it's 3 feet. Yeah. So we'd need a 3-feet variance for that. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we know we don't need a buffer. He owns each side of us. He owns on each side, yep. yeah, so he doesn't Correct. need a buffer. Was there any room to, to add a couple of feet to that driveway to the left or right? No. And Dan, I'm looking at 603B. The minimum length shall be 21 feet for parallel parking, so he would have to have 21 feet per spot. Is that, was that, I'm sorry, I wasn't. Yeah. What, what section was that? 603B, uh, number one. All right, that's the minimum length. So the length that they were asking for 21 feet instead of 18, he would still have he a, still enough has, room yeah. for four, yeah. But I mean, if we're gonna do the variance for the three feet, so I just wanna make sure we have everything Yeah, that, in that's, that form. Yeah, that's going, the, going front to back. Yep, yep. And he's 21 feet, so four cars is 84. He's got 100. Yep. So he's okay there. So, so where, the, where are we putting the, width, the fifth the width. Can in, the garage. Garage? in the garage? In the garage. Yeah, you can the garage. the garage in the back, yes. Okay. Um, now, you said that it's a two-family home and there's a business storefront? There's a business storefront, yeah. Correct. So that's going to be the third That's going to be the third apartment, correct. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I just wanted to call attention to the gigantic hole in your foundation. I don't know if you want to yeah, oh, I know get, get a... And there's all sorts of doors and windows yep. leaning against them. We're going to be redoing that. Like I just property. wanted to make sure you weren't starting work before. No, no, no. no. I've been working windows. on the other. I've been working on the other two properties. Okay. As of right now, that's why I have permits for those, but I haven't pulled anything for that one yet. Okay. Is there anybody else that'd like to give testimony in this case? Just step to the side. Oh, no problem. 
You raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Name and address? Edward Tromko, Sr., 262 Railroad Avenue. I don't know if you have what I have here. May I approach and just give you this, and you take a look at it. How, how far are you away from this property? Um, I'm, I'm the president of the West Scranton Neighbors Association. Okay. Did you want to give any testimony or? I think the pictures speak for themselves. There are a few neighbors here within 100 feet of this property. They, maybe they wish to speak. Okay. I'm representing the association. I was asked to come in. Anybody else want to give testimony on this case? Oh, wait, is it the, Mr. Chomko? Yes. Sir. Is it the association's preference to keep it as a commercial spot? No, it's, it's their preference to keep it as residential. Okay. As an R2. Okay. But right now there's a commercial space in there. You have to know the building, sir. Okay. It was run by the people that lived in the house that he's remodeling. And that was a ceramic classroom. It was a combination of the classroom and an apartment for one of their sons. Okay. But that person isn't this gentleman here? I'm sorry? That person isn't this gentleman here? That you said the person who ran it before? No, they're deceased. They're deceased. So this is a person who is probably well aware that this place needs I don't know. You said a lot of a, renovations. It was a commercial front. Yes, it right. was. But that was a combination of an apartment also. All it was was two rooms used as a commercial and two rooms used as a place for one of the sons on the first floor and the second floor was one apartment thank you sir okay is there anyone else that wants to give testimony on this please raise your right hand do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Name and address, please. Uh, my name is Roseanne Flynn, 529 4th Avenue in Scranton. Thank you. Uh, I live two houses up on the same block. Uh, you're doing a, lot, a nice job fixing the house. Uh, a lot of remodeling, you could tell. But the, the in question, the address in question is so decrepit. How in the world is, is that going to be it? I hope you have a lot of money to do it. <laughs> My fear is that uh, you're going to put a Band-Aid on it, rent it out. It, uh, it's not safe. It cannot be sanitary or healthy in any way. I hope so. Uh, in that case, we'd love someone, families in there. I would. And say we, uh, I would because it, you know, why have the place empty and yeah. just, you know, rotting to the core? That's that's a question we all ask. But just so you know, an occupancy permit would never be distributed unless the inspectors came and it was completely up to code. So, lots of homes are inhabited that are decrepit well, that are awful and I fear that that's what this would be this is this is a different case because he's here now so it, it it's it's a have to it's a must mr. Velez was this condemned yes okay so it has to be brought up to code so mm -hmm. if it's condemned he's gonna have to go through a, a vigorous process Very. to get it uncondemned <laughs> okay okay then good luck uh, thank you the parking you. oh I'm sorry the parking uh, uh, parallel parking uh, 
man, oh man, what? So if there's three cars and I'm the last car parked, I'm going to tell the two other people, come in and pull out so I can pull out? They're not going to do that. No, no, they're going to no. parallel park, and they're yeah. going to, and yes. they're going to, and they're going to, they're going to pull forward, like you. Just like ah, you would on the street. Just like to do that. Just if you ever seen that back alley there, behind the city, the this building, there's a, yeah. a narrow yeah. space, yeah. and people parallel park there. They just, you know, there's going to be there. It's. it's <laughs> it doesn't seem it's, like there's enough room to me. There has to be enough yeah. space in between each car for no. the cars to be yeah. able to get out. Yeah. Because there is no parking on that street. You know that, yeah, okay. This, the That's driveway. it, thank you. This, this driveway, the thank you. Line down the Is there anyone else that would like to give testimony on this? So Dan, like, uh, uh, I, we have- I, I think we have one more question and that would be the size of the apartments, the square footage of the apartments. Okay. You can go back to the podium and speak into the you, microphone. Yeah, that's all been submitted already. Oh, that's I, on your plan that you submitted? Yeah, that's in the plan, yeah. I submitted the sizes of the apartments, the rooms, every room. We have room sizes, but if you could, what's, yeah, did you total what's the square footage of each one? Excuse me? We have the room sizes, but do you have the total square footage of each apartment? Um, offhand, no, right, right now I wouldn't. Okay. Dan, with this being condemned, would he have to... Uh, have to be over 600 feet when they inspected this or no that, that the condemnation goes to the uh, quality of the work that he's put into it to rehab it but it's our job to make sure it complies with zoning could we make it a stipulation that each unit is over 600 square feet or do we have to have them come back with some some well let's See if we can do a calculation. I'm doing it now. Paul, Paul's doing one now. Can I ask you a question? How do you not know what the square footage of your house is? It's, well, I'm doing the work on the house and I haven't even started it yet. That's why. When they asked me to submit everything, I just gave you every single measurement. Are you the owner? Yes. Okay. I just gave every measurement to, the, to every room just so you knew what it was. That's what they asked me to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Which apartment is the smallest? Is the first the one in the floor back. apartment First one? floor back is the I, smallest I did one. The, I did the math and I got about 686 square feet. For the one in the back, correct? For the one in the back, yeah. yeah. that's about right, yes. And that's the smallest one. That's the smallest out of three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one upstairs is probably about 1,500 and the other one in the front is probably about close to 1,000. Okay, so each apartment is more than 650. How many bedrooms in each apartment? Excuse me? How many bedrooms in each apartment? Um, the back bedroom, the back apartment has one bedroom. The, uh, the other apartment on the first floor has two bedrooms and upstairs has two bedrooms. I'm pretty sure you're calling up right out here. 1070 on the square footage for the two bedroom apartments and the one bedroom is 735. Okay. According to your drawing here. That's at the ledger at the bottom of the drawing in the left-hand corner. Yeah. <clears throat> I did the second one, and I, I, I'm not even finished, and I'm already at above 600. Okay, I think, yeah, I think every they're, they're all above, above 600. 600. Yep. Yeah. Dan, do we have to put in a, we're going to allow the three feet in the driveway? Or can we just vote the both variants? Well, it's, it's one project, so if we're allowing the parallel parking that. If we're know, allowing the three feet. It goes without saying that. Does he have to request a variance, Dan, at this time? It's all part of his application. All part of it.
I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to vote. Mr. Paul Matessa? Yes. Ms. Newcomb? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mr. Gattins? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Vote of 5 to 0. You've been approved. Thank you. Good luck. I think number two we're skipping, correct? Correct. So we're on to number three. Number three is JBAS Realty LLC. Applicant seeks a variance to restore 930 Meadow Avenue into mid-rise apartments, 37 units, with a maximum square footage of 735 square feet, R1A zone. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Name and address? Uh, Joseph DeCipio. Uh, home address is uh, 207 Blue Shutters Road, Rowing Brook Township. Thank you. I am the uh, architect project manager, uh, manager for this project. It's a commercial uh, industrial conversion in South Scranton on the corner of Meadow and Maple Street. The, uh, it's the former uh, giant floor building. I have some photographs that I could uh, give to the board of existing conditions. The, uh, the building, uh, which I, as I said, was the former giant floor building and before that the Gold Star building in South Scranton. Uh, was vacant. Um, it's a three-story brick building, um, operated as a commercial business for years. Uh, it's about uh, 80 years old and had had many additions that were put onto it over the years. And uh, recently it became vacant and that uh, then was purchased by J Bass Realty. And the uh, intent is to convert that uh, structure into uh, residential one and two family uh, or, uh, apartments, one and two uh, unit apartments. Um, it's a three-story uh, structure, uh, approximately 15,000 square feet per floor, so three floors is about uh, 39,000 square feet. Uh, each unit, uh, the one bedrooms would be approximately 750 square feet. The two units would range from about 1,000 to 1,200 square feet. Um, the in the intent is to uh, call it a senior housing complex, uh, meaning 55 or older. Um, the application is made to, you know, convert it into this resident uh, multifamily uh, apartment building. It is in a R1A zone uh, currently, and uh, it operated as a commercial business, which has since been vacant. Which I believe then it would, the board would view that as deferring back to the original uh, zoning. Um, there is a total of 37 units uh, in the building. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, ratio for parking of one and a half per unit, that would give us a requirement of about 56 uh, parking stalls. The current plan uh, accommodates 65 uh, parking stalls. There is an adjacent paved area that was a parking lot and will remain uh, to be a parking lot. Um, I do have a site plan, and I don't know if that was submitted with the application or not. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, the floor plans were. Okay, um, the corner, this is uh, Maple and Meadow. 
and this building is visible from from 81 you could see it with the sign on top um, the existing parking lot is over here and the existing l-shaped building is here there was some existing structures that were added in the 70s and there was a uh, that has since been demolished there was a uh, permit for demolition which has already taken place so the, the existing 70s structures have been removed the the original 1920 structures are are going to be remain uh, remain and refurbished and again the existing parking is going to be utilized and that's where we have about 65 stalls to accommodate the 56 required what, a, what about that green structure that's on there? It looks like it's a... Yeah, it's a metal building. Yeah. Um, the intent there is to demolish that as well later. It's going to be used for uh, staging and storage during construction. I do have a rendering I can show you. The name, the name of the project is uh, Lofts at Village Square. Um, so this is the view from the parking lot. Uh, the center entry area is going to be a small addition which will accommodate the lobby and the, uh, all the structure that is surrounding that is original. Uh, it will be uh, maintained and then essentially the entire building, the only thing that's going to be really utilized is the shell of the building, the walls and the roofs and the floors the windows and all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing is going to, is already removed underneath the demolition permit. The new addition of the lobby, this would make the entry here. You will enter there and then gain access to an elevator which will take you down half a flight to the lower level apartments or up to the second and third floor. And basically everything else will be new. All the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, sprinklers, windows um, will all be new and of course that will be the building permit and plan review process that will address all the code issues related to life safety uh, sprinklers uh, plumbing and etc <clears throat> just out of curiosity will you have um, like fire doors on each level I I'm asking this because my mother lives in a senior living and they have lots of people set things on fire constantly in order to not evacuate the entire building they shut a door and only that you know area will, will you be having any of those right I, I don't know what the, the appropriate term for the door yeah. is, but um, there the the gray structure in the rendering is actually an existing fire stair which is being maintained and then there are two other fire stairs in the building um, I'm sorry so um, the exiting is going to be accommodated through three different uh, existing stair towers. I think what you're, I don't know. Asking is so, seniors they don't they don't move very fast. Some they're not all 55. Some of them are. Right. They don't if they don't have to evacuate the entire building. If the fire is like maintained to one apartment, there's doors they can shut. Like kind of like I, at a hospital. I I think that'll be up to the uh, the fire code people to. Well, that's that's see what's what's necessary. Yeah, it would probably I, I fall would, underneath the building code uh, requirements. Um, hospitals are much larger, typically, so they do have these fire separations that you're talking right. about. Um, I don't know if would, th that would come into play here. That uh, decision really hasn't been made yet. Um, you know the the frame is still there, and uh, it it really hasn't been decided, quite frankly. Uh, I don't know if I could say that. Um, I, the frame is there. I don't know what the intent. You know, the decision of tearing it completely off or not is is uh, not made at this point. Again, if a billboard was to put, be put up, it would have to come on our, our zoning ordinance to be approved. What's your, your completion date for this project? Well, um, depending on approvals, uh, um, you know, it's probably a, a, about a year construction uh, window once it you know, gets fully underway. Basically, like I said, it's it's just demolition right now, uh, and then once we go through the 
all the planning and then uh, we'll have to go through plan review for the building code issues and then you know we could start construction is that all, all the testimony that you have yes is there anybody in the audience that'd like to give testimony on this case there's not well then I'll make a motion second Mr. Pomatessa? Yes. Ms. Newcomb? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mr. Gattins? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Vote of 5 to 0, you've been approved. Thank Good you. luck. Joe, just uh, this project also has to come before the Planning Commission as a land development when you convert a building into residential units. That's more on the civil end than the, the architectural. We're going to take a five minute recess before this, uh, this case comes up. Mr. King, will you please call the next case? second page <laughs> mr. chairman brick investment corporation seeks a variance a special exception and a, a validity challenge for 1800 North Washington Avenue this location the former Scranton School for the Deaf applicants seek zoning board approval for a mixed-use restaurant office space event space dormitories and recreation campus institutional light zone thank you off the record and I have a few procedural matters my name is attorney Mary Dempsey I represent the Green Ridge Revitalization can you just go up to the microphone so yes we can, uh... they told me to do that <laughs> my mistake is this okay can you hear me now you, you, want to you can also go to the, yeah and there's also one at the podium too that they, they put the news watch 16 one there too that'll make life easier is this better now okay so procedurally I'd like to bring up a few things and actually mrs. Newcomb it comes based on your comment to a previous um, individual who was in here you had said that the application was not notarized and for that reason you weren't going to accept the hearing today now brick investment corporation it certainly is notarized I have no objection to that however I do note that the list of all affected property owners is absolutely empty and I checked to make sure and I saw that the zoning ordinance ordinance specifically says under 112 a 3 B that the applicant shall provide the city with a list of such property owners and thus far I haven't seen it and we did a Freedom of Information Act request to get these and it was not included or attached so for the same reason that you felt that other application was fatal I would argue that this application is fatal as well that's just one procedural matter I have I don't know if you'd like to address that or you'd like me to get into my second one if I can respond my name is attorney William Jones I represent the applicant if we're gonna ask you to do the same thing with the microphone please <laughs> All right, do you want me over there? You could probably, it, it works a lot better over there. That'd be fine. If I can, with regard to the application, we had a review of it by your zoning officer. And I would ask Mr. King if he could, uh, I actually supplied the names of all the uh, butters. We had Dave Durkovic uh, prepare a uh, zoning map and uh, he listed all of them and we provided that particular list and it was attached to the application. I actually went in and looked at the application to make sure it was still there and I just took a look and it's in his hand over there now. So we did supply them all. Mr. King, you want to comment? There is a list. I'm not, I'm not going to count them here, but there's much too many that would fit on the face of the application. I guess uh, probably about 30, give or take. Do we know when that was provided? Because when we did the Freedom of Information request, it certainly wasn't provided to us. An empty application was provided to us. I, I don't know who responded to that. It wasn't me. Uh, 
this was in the application uh, and in the meeting file when I got possession of it last week. Uh, and Mr. King, may I ask you another thing? I know that you're obligated to give individual notice to the neighbors. Was that sent via regular mail, certified mail? How was that sent out? I didn't send them out myself, so I would assume it typically it's done by regular mail. Okay. And um, I live directly across from the, oral, the state school for the deaf within probably 15 feet, let alone 200 feet. And my notice was just thrown in the front of my door. Is that how most of the notices were provided? Uh, Oh, sometimes they are they are hand delivered. I, I know Jax that was yeah. here prior. Uh, he did hand deliver a lot. He did of hand the, deliver because a lot of times they would come back marked if the at, if the tax assessment information changed or something. He he felt it was better to to hand deliver them. So he would hand deliver them not to the person but to the front door of the home. To, to, to the property. Yes. Okay. The second question I have, and Mr. King, both you and Mr. Pinatar received a copy of this. It's a June tenth letter. And um, I think it's probably better off if we determine this now as it may or may not decide what we'll do with the rest of the hearing. But we, uh, in that letter, noted that under the uh, law, it specifically says that the zoning board shall send this matter to the city planning commission. And I also quoted the statute. Um, and we're asking that that be done prior to any further zoning hearing so that the city planning commission can t take a look at it and take a look at the issues regarding traffic generation, noise, fumes, odor, glare, hours of operation, the proximity of the requested use to the neighbors. That's all part of what they can do, and then they can make a recommendation back. In my letter, you also, I also noted that the same benefit was also provided to the last hearing that was here that I believe it was the Forever Sammy Foundation. Um, that's what happened here, and I think it was you, Mr. King, who authored a very detailed letter in that that matter uh, on behalf of the City Planning Commission. So we're asking for that as well as a referral to the city engineer, which is also mandated under the zoning ordinance has, has, and has not yet happened. May I have an answer on both either or both of those requests? Mr. If Jones. I can, may I address that? Once again, my name is Attorney William Jones. I represent the applicant. Uh, we supplied the materials to the city and to ensure that the uh, Planning Commission actually had the matter before it. Uh, they didn't deal with it in the May meeting. I went to the June meeting. Uh, they uh, entertained it. They took a motion to accept our application. I put on the same materials with regard to light, noise, traffic, uh, the particular aspects of it. So with regard to the ordinance, it was complied with with regard to the uh, Planning Commission that they have it. I also point out, it says they may or may not send you anything back, but you still uh, go forward with the application. Uh, as you're aware, this has a long history. It has gone back since uh, last year uh, with regard to it. So there was ample time with regard to that. But to answer that, the uh, Planning Commission uh, has had the materials. They generally attend the uh, Planning Commission uh, meeting as well. I don't know whether they have reviewed this or not. Uh, but once again, that is not a, uh, doesn't stop you from having your hearing, and we're here tonight to have that. But just rest assured, we went to the Planning Commission and we gave them the material and a presentation. Thank you. If I may, Mr. King, you are kind enough to um, issue an email which was very open, honest, and transparent. And you indicated that, yes, they did show up. They were not on the agenda. There were notes, no notes taken of the meeting. There was not a transcriber. Um, they asked you to take the application and that was all that was done. No other documents were looked at or reviewed. So I do believe that is a misstatement by the attorney. And if you'd like to clean, clear that up at all, Mr. King, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'll say Mr. Jones presented a copy of his application with all the attachments, which he has information on each of those uh, factors to be looked at. The Planning Commission informed Mr. Jones because that it was not on our agenda and there was no notice of it, they weren't going to take any action on it. So they just accepted the paperwork, they took no action. And as I said in the email, if the Zoning Board so, so chooses to ask the Planning Commission for a recommendation, they'll schedule it for their, July, or for their June 26th meeting. Thank you, I appreciate that. And I would again renew our request that number one, it either be sent to the City Planning Commission or number two, that the City Engineer issue a recommendation as well, which is also available under the zoning ordinance. 
if, Attorney, uh, uh, if, if uh, I can, uh, only because of the uh, cost to my client. Obviously, this is a very expensive project. Uh, at the request of the city, we withdrew the last application. That was back in November, so everyone could have ample time to uh, review our plans and application. We actually submitted this back in April, so we don't want to be held accountable whether it wasn't looked at in April or May. I made sure that they had it in June. All the planning commission has to do in June is accept the application. They actually liked it. Uh, Mr. King was there. They said they were uh, very much liked it. They, 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 no, they actually said it, and he can confirm it. But putting that aside, what they did say, uh, they wanted to go forward, and Mr. King pointed out that they legally met their responsibilities, that it was an advertised meeting. Uh, they added it as an agenda item. They asked for a public comment before they went forward. We put the presentation on with regard to it, and on top of that, they understood that this has to go forward uh, because obviously it's quite expensive. This is the second time that we're here in the third month that the application was there, and everybody knew when this particular date was. So they were comfortable accepting their uh, particular application so we could move forward. I don't know if the zoning yeah. board members can see Mr. I think Dan's going to cl yeah. clarify shaking, this up for them. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the Planning Commission. I was at the meeting. I don't, they did not add the item to their agenda, and they didn't take any action on the item other than to accept it for review and possibly schedule it for, for, for a hearing. They or actually a made meeting. a motion. They accepted the, uh, and they voted unanimously to accept our application. To accept the application for review. And I presented my uh, materials at it. You, you presented a copy of the application. Yes, you did. Was there any public comment, Mr. King? No, there was no public in attendance. No public in attendance because it had not been publicized. Correct. Uh, thank you. May I renew my request? It, just so everybody understands this, I said, well, it, the, no, the chairman asked. He said, do we actually advertise this as an agenda item? And Mr. King said, no, we advertise whenever your meetings are. Maybe it's the beginning of the year. Maybe it's two weeks before, whatever they do. He said, well, what do we actually do? He said, well, we add it to our website. So we said yeah. we, we post our we post our agendas on our website prior to the meetings. Yeah, well then that was it. So that was the one item that I guess it wasn't posted in the hall. That's why they as a procedural point, they actually voted to make it an agenda item. So they did it because I explained to them uh, because of the time and, and we've been very diligent in doing this and we this is our third month on it. So uh, and I understand if they want to go back to the planning. I explained to them that night, we're not going back. So th this is moving forward on the timelines that the MPC has. So, and they understood that and they, they appreciated that. Mr. Pinatar, Mr. King, is this for clarification as board? And I might be wrong, this really has nothing to do with our board here tonight. Uh, we can continue testimony and you just not vote on it, this goes back to the planning commission. I, I, I believe it, that it, would be correct. So, I mean, what happened the, at that the planning ordinance, The ordinance says the planning commission shall be provided with an opportunity to review <clears throat> any proposed special exception prior to a decision by the zoning board, meaning that we could take testimony, but we can't make a final decision until the planning commission has had an opportunity to review. Now, the next question is, have they had an opportunity to review? Mr. Jones is saying yes. Uh, 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 Attorney Dempsey is saying no. Um, I'll leave that part of it. Uh, I, I can't answer that one way or another, but uh, my recommendation would be that we take the testimony but hold off on the uh, decision until you get and, something and, back and let, from the Again, for clarity, person. let's make sure that everyone knows that the opinion of the Planning Commission does not Hold us to that vote or their opinion. It, it's, it's a not, recommendation. Their opinion is not binding to us. Right. It's just a recommendation. Correct. Thank you. All right. And I'll be very brief on my final one. Uh, we all know that notice has to be given adequately and advertised. Um, this is a picture of what was on the telephone poles out in front of Marywood University. And it's stated 
very accurately in one area that it was seeking a variance. However, I noticed that that also conflicts with what was in, the, I'm assuming, the Scranton Times, where it called it a validity variance. So to the extent that the notices are not consistent with one another and don't say the same thing, again, we're objecting that proper notice wasn't given and that it's defective. Thank you. Okay, so, so noted on the record. So we're going to proceed with the case and correct. If I can, uh, I would like to make part of the record the uh, deed to the property as uh, applicants exhibit number one, the Hemen, Henham Youth uh, survey which would be uh, applicants exhibit number two and the uh, tax map uh, for the particular area uh, just so we can figure out where it's at. Yes. Was that provided to us before? They were at the first hearing, but uh, they'd have to go back into the I don't have that to the record. Have a copy. Uh, I, we only have the uh, the one here, but I do have the blown up exhibits for you. Increase that expense budget. We'll get to it. Uh, if I can, I'd like to call my first witness. Would you please state your name for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Name and address, please. My name is Hillary Levitt. I live at 23 West 73rd Street in New York, New York, 10023. Thank you. Can you spell your last name, please? L E V for Victor, I T T Thomas Thomas. Now, Ms. Levitt, I know that you've testified before this uh, board at the uh, last hearing. If you can, uh, just if you would reiterate, what's your relationship to uh, Brick Investment Corporation? Um, I'm a consultant for Brick Investment Corporation and its affiliates uh, with seven years' experience in commercial real estate and banking. And are you familiar with the uh, application that's been filed? Yes. Can you please explain for the uh, board uh, an introduction to the uh, development in, in the course of your testimony, if you could explain some of the exhibits that I see you have on the uh, board there. Sure. Um, so the property that we're here to speak about today is most known with the address 1800 North Washington Avenue. It's approximately 8.5 acres and is located in the city of Scranton and the borough of Dunmore. The property consists, as you can see, um, in front of you of nine connected buildings of which one of the buildings is located in Scranton which we're here to talk to you about today and eight are located in the borough of Dunmore. Uh, the unimproved parts of the property have a park-like character with courtyards, trees, um, green space, and a stream. The eight buildings located in Dunmore are the original buildings and built and expanded through the late 1800s to the mid 1900s. And if I may, right. just to respond in part with regard to a validity variance uh, that's presently before this board, it's an integrated uh, property, right. and therefore uh, case law supports that we're allowed to offer testimony right. in that particular. I, I, I think it's, since it's all part of the one project, we're going to allow that testimony. Go ahead. Okay, so can you? Thank you. Um, where was I? Right. Um, in 1974. Building 1 was built. Building 1 is the uh, building that we're referring to that's in Scranton. Um, and today, all of the buildings are connected via enclosed walkways, um, making it a completely integrated campus. The property was originally the Pennsylvania State Oral School for the Deaf, and in 1976 was renamed the Scranton State School for the Deaf, 
owned by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. In 2011, Marywood University purchased the property. Marywood subsequently used the property for educational purposes. In 2016, Heinerfeld Commercial Real Estate listed the property for sale on behalf of Marywood University. John Cognetti, on behalf of Heinerfield, is here today to speak to the sale process of the building. Now, specific to Scranton, Building 1 is a three-story steel and concrete structure with concrete masonry and a brick envelope. It has an approximate footprint of 9,500 square feet. The building in total is 33,940 square feet in size. During its tenure as a Scranton State School for the Deaf, the first floor consisted of a lobby, community room, cafeteria, office space, and classrooms. The second and third floors consisted of, but not limited to, office space, classrooms, and dorms. Um, now to address what we are proposing for Building 1 and the development as a whole. Can you, excuse me, can yeah. you back away from the microphone sure. a little yeah. bit there? Sorry, Thank you. too close, too far. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Too, too, a little too close. Okay. <laughs> Um, Urban Smart Growth, which is an affiliate of Brick Investment Corporation, its vision for the redevelopment is to create an intergenerational mixed-use community. We want to repurpose these beautiful buildings into a, you know, a community where people can come, live, work, and play, and really contribute to the surrounding neighborhood. All the existing structures will be rehabilitated and repurposed. Um, to the extent possible, the green space and landscaping will remain so the project continues to blend in with its surroundings. Throughout the nine connected buildings, our current plan consists of the following. 69 residential units, including 12 live work units, 13 offices, a 40 seat restaurant, a coffee bar, a gallery space, a resident fitness center, a bed and breakfast, indoor and outdoor event space, and 282 off-street, on-site parking spaces, of which 117 are located in Scranton and 165 located in Dunmore. The main pedestrian entrance to the project, and specifically Building 1, will be located on-site, off the street, and adjacent to the Scranton parking lot. I'm just going to step around to point that out where it is. A 655 square foot addition is proposed to enhance the pedestrian and that entryway I just pointed out and Jerry our architect will speak to more detail on that um, in a few moments. If I can just to interject at this point I would ask that it be marked uh, applicants exhibit number four. I saw that you had approached the easel and it refers to a uh, master plan is that correct? Correct. I'd like to If you would go on, thank you. Right. We've designed the project to have the main entrance where it is to utilize the North Washington driveway, which is already existing, direct vehicle and pedestrian traffic away from the street and into the property to minimize any associated noise and congestion for the residents along that section of North Washington Avenue. Also, this entry point is intuitive slash user friendly because it is connected to the physical and historical address of the property, 1800 North Washington Avenue. We are proposing the following uses for Building 1's ground floor. First, a 380 square foot coffee bar. We envision this coffee bar to be a place where residents, neighbors, and visitors can purchase a beverage and pastry on the go. There will also be a couple of seats available if people want to sit and enjoy their purchase. The coffee bar will be open from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. seven days a week. Secondly, a 4,640 square foot gallery. We envision this space for artists from the property and the neighborhood to display their work 
where residents and visitors can come and enjoy it. The gallery will be open for visiting when either the coffee bar or restaurant is open. Also on the, la oh, sorry. Also on the ground floor, we are proposing a restaurant with a dining area of 12, 000, sorry, 1,240 square feet. It will have approximately 40 seats, which we expect is actually less than the previous use would have had. Food and drink will be served by servers to the tables where the patrons are seated. The restaurant will be open from 11 a.m. until 12 a.m. seven days a week is what we are proposing. We believe the key to creating a community is offering tenants, neighbors, and visitors a place to socialize and convene, to really integrate it, to become part of the neighborhood. This has been proven time and time again with previous projects that we have done where there have been restaurants. For this project, the logical and best place for a restaurant is in the building's ground floor as there is existing kitchen infrastructure that can be repurposed and an adjoining cafeteria space that used to be a dining area that we can use also as a dining area for the restaurant. If I can, just to uh, interrupt, maybe it would be helpful uh, when you talk about an existing uh, Existing conditions be made part of the record. Talk about the first floor. I'm showing you a document that's referred to as existing conditions. Does that show the uh, existing uh, kitchen area? Yes, it does. How would you describe that kitchen area? Where, as in where it's located in the building or? Yes, where it's located, how big it is, what you see in there. Is it substantial, small? So the kitchen area itself, separate from the dining space, is located on the, the North Washington Avenue side of the building. And it is, I believe, 1,500 square feet. Um, and there is existing equipment that we had tested um, that works in there. And it is adjacent to the dining space, which is 1,240 square feet, as previously stated, which we are proposing would be the dining area of the restaurant. All right, if you continue. Okay. Um, you know, I guess to continue on that the fact that the infrastructure is already there, it also makes the most sense to have the restaurant um, and these kind of community uses in building one because we really consider this the face of the project as it is on the main thoroughfare, thoroughfare of the existing road network which is North Washington Avenue. Um, and the main entrance would be located right there. So it makes it the most visible and accessible place um, of the project. Um, also a very important thing to note um, as to why this building will be repurposed and rehabilitated um, is that it will cost $1.5 million approximately to demo the building, making it cost prohibitive not to rehabilitate. Um, Jerry will speak more to other uses as to why this is cost prohibitive, as to why they would be cost prohibitive. Can I interrupt you with a question at this time? Yes. Um, looking at your plans, remember from last time, you had a small bar area in the restaurant. Is that eliminated? Did I hear you correctly? All drinks are going to be served to the table? At yes. The dining? But there will, there will be a small kind of six stool um, bar at the, uh, in the restaurant. So that has not been eliminated. I didn't hear you say anything about that before. That's my question. Maybe I missed it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's part of the restaurant. It's still in there. Okay. Thank you. Um, USG, we also plan to use the gallery space as event space too, um, if people want to book that for events. Uh, we envision this space to be used for community gatherings, uh, showers, weddings, corporate events, that sort of thing. Um, we think that also some events may want to occupy the restaurant space as well. Uh, events would take place, we are proposing, during the hours of 9 a.m. and 12 a.m., um, basically the same hours as the restaurant, except for two hours earlier in case there's a corporate event. Um, it's important to note that the restaurant and events and every use on the property throughout the entire project would be managed and operated by Urban Smart Growth or an affiliate um, to ensure operational compatibility with the project's other uses and its tenants and neighbors. 
Um, I'll now move on to the second and third floor of the building, unless anyone else has questions on building one before I continue. I would say let's, let's hear all three floors and then. Okay. The plan for the second floor is to have seven offices ranging in size between approximately 250 square feet and to 395 square feet. The seven offices will total 2,019 square feet. All the offices will be located along the east side of the floor. Along the west side of the floor, there will be six live work studios. Each studio meets the 600 square foot minimum size requirement. The six live work studios total 3,844 square feet. What we mean by live work is a space where a tenant can both work. We usually see this in other projects where it's a uh, like a freelance graphic designer or a, or a painter or someone who just has their own uh, law practice and it's just themselves um, working and they can also reside there if they wish. Um, at many of our other projects we find these uh, very high demand because of the flexibility that, and affordability that they provide people. The plan for the third floor is quite similar. Um, there would be six offices ranging in size between 230 square feet to 250 square feet. The six offices would total uh, 1,425 square feet, and all the offices would also be all along the east side of the floor. Uh, similarly to the second floor, all along the west side of the floor, of the, sorry, of the third floor, there would be six live work studios. Each studio meets the 600 square foot uh, minimum size requirement as well. Uh, the six live work studios total 3,908 square feet. Um, I know that was a lot of numbers, et cetera. So to summarize, on the second and third floor of building one, we are proposing a total of 13 offices, totaling 3,444 square feet, and 12 live work studios, totaling 7,752 square feet. Um, lastly, the thing that I will address is parking. Um, as I mentioned before, the entire project has 282 spaces currently on the plan, 117 of which are located in Scranton. The uses described previously on the ground floor, second floor, and third floor, according to Scranton zoning parking requirements, require 61 spaces. Um, therefore, because we have 117 in Scranton, we have sufficient parking for the uses we are proposing in Scranton. I have a question on the live work spaces. Mm -hmm. What do they consist of? Just and you, what do they consist of? Is there a kitchen? Is there a bathroom? Is it a typical apartment? Uh, yes, there's a bathroom and there's a small kitchen. Okay. Our architect will be able to kind of give you some more specifics. Well, on I was going to say some of the drawings seem to have it, and then some of them don't, as far as the plumbing. Okay. Thank you. The access to the restaurant. I know there were some issues about. Uh, coming off of North Washington Avenue and into the restaurant, are we still trying to have a, an entrance on, on North Washington Avenue? Uh, you mean pedestrian entrance or using yes. the driveway? No, a pedestrian. Yes, there's a, still a pedestrian working entrance um, in the building that we would use. Where? Like, is, that, is that on the, the North Washington Avenue side? Yes. I thought we said last time that that wasn't going to be there. At, at the initial testimony you gave the first time, it was going to be closed off with panic doors panic bars on the inside just for an egress, emergency egress. Um, but still something we are happy to consider. That was something in conversations with the Green Ridge Revitalization Committee, um, something we are willing to offer to mitigate noise and, I guess, pedestrian traffic. However, we'll, as we'll, I'm sure we'll get to later this evening, those discussions, we couldn't reach a middle ground, um, and therefore we don't know if we're going to be proposing that. If um, you know. I, I, thought it, I thought it was kind of agreed upon at your last testimony here. So that, that, has that changed? So it's off the board at this point there? That, that we wouldn't say it's that off the board, but we're not committing to that being an exit only entrance at this time. Okay, thank you. Calling your attention to the uh, master plan that's up there, where's the primary entrance for building number one going to be? Maybe this answers your question. I'm going to, if you can go back to the podium so we can hear you. I'm going to go back to my question again uh, and just sitting here thinking, refresh my mind. One of the concerns was parking in front of the building, and mm -hmm. that's what we agreed upon at that time, that to eliminate that parking concern for the neighbors, that that door would be closed off. And I, and I left that hearing 
what the assumption I was going to be. But I mean, we've changed. It's a, it's a new hearing, I guess. So I, yep. I'm sorry. I, I just thought that uh, that was something that I could look forward to still being in that package right. tonight. But yeah, I think we, what she's saying, it's not off the table, but it's part. It could I, be I understand part of that. But what I'm saying is it was on the table last time and I thought we left here with it on the table. Did you guys have a meeting after the, the zoning board to try to negotiate stuff? Is that what happened? Are you referring to the Green Ridge Revitalization yes. Committee? Yes, we did. And then that's when things kind of fell apart after the meeting? Yeah, we can address how those conversations went. I'm sure we both will. Um, but we are committed to not, um, to agreeing to no off-street parking, or sorry, no on-street parking. We aren't going to get in the way if Scranton wants to make that there's no street parking on we have sufficient parking on site and we're not going to object to uh, no on-street parking outside of the property. I, and I don't mean to badger with this question or anything like that, but in all honesty, uh, there has to be some middle ground that you people could have came to and, and instead of coming back here all the time and everything. I'm, I'm not final fault with anybody, so <laughs> relax. But I'm just saying, I, I would like to see this just worked out to where, like, you know, it... it I'm, yeah, it, I, 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 I agree. I'm, 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 my point is, because now we're going to go back to the drawing board again, I feel. Uh, we're going to meet with the, the neighbors again, like tonight. And uh, I don't think none of us want to sit here the whole night to negotiate stuff out. Uh, I would have thought that a lot of this would been, have taken place by now. But we'll continue with what we're doing here. Um, I, we prepared something on behalf of Urban Smart Growth that addresses the conversations. If you'd like us to read them, I'm happy to do so. We also wanted to reach a middle ground. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, having the North Washington entrance as exit only was the smallest point and I can't make that decision right now that's obviously an owner decision to make um, I'm sh I confidently speak that that's still something that they'd be willing to do um, but unfortunately as we explained to Green Ridge Vita Revitalization Committee many of their conditions and things that they were um, trying to get us to agree to were going to make financing on this project absolutely impossible and they also wanted us to agree to connecting all their conditions in a complicated way that and would also give them authority to revoke um, zoning if there was an issue which Scranton code and zoning has cures and remedies that would be dealt with individually um, so therefore and we explain that to them up front and at the meeting and afterwards in agreement negotiations and they weren't willing to budge on that uh, we offered lots of compromises um, and they were going to offer no return and support. They were going to keep objecting at every step. So we sent them our comments to the latest draft that they had sent us, and we never heard back from them. Um, so conversations ceases to exist because they weren't really, really to budge on things, and we were offered quite a few compromises. Okay. Well, let's continue with the testimony then and move forward. Um, I'm finished, so I will pass it off to Jerry, our architect. Not, not, not yet. Oh. Not yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do we share the microphone in this instance, or should yeah. I sit down and use that one? I'll use that if one, you sure. Want, if you want the microphone. Say, I want to switch these with me for one second. Yeah, we'll see. Does this work? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Hillary, just to be clear, um, this is definitely going to encompass a bar. There's no question about that. No, it's not going to encompass a bar. It's going to encompass a restaurant that will have a very small bar area where they're serving drinks. Okay, with six It's a family seats. restaurant. There'll be six seats at the bar. Yes, That's approximately. It. Approximately, there could be more. Probably not the way it's designed right now in the plans. Okay, but we're going to serve alcohol to the people sitting at the tables. Yes, and we're getting you have to get a liquor license to do that. Yes. And what about the outdoor venue? Or is alcohol going to be served at the weddings at the outdoor venue as well? Potentially, we'll okay. have to get a liquor license, and we'll have to comply by the rules and code of the liquor license. Okay. Now, with regard to the outdoor venue, that's where you're going to have your events that you described to us as weddings and concerts. Is that correct? And indoor and potentially outdoor, yes. Okay. In the lower courtyard, and well, sorry, in the upper courtyard. And they're going to go to about midnight. Yes. Okay. And there's going to be noise associated with those. There's no denying that. Yes, there's going to be noise, but we'll have to comply with noise ordinance. Okay. Now, um, have you provided any updated or new traffic study for us or for the board that's required under the zoning, zoning ordinance regarding a non-typical day with traffic? Yes, we have a report and we have a traffic engineer who will be speaking to the results of the report tonight. Is it the same one you gave us in the past? Uh, no, it's been updated. Okay. Did this person actually go to the site? I believe so. She grew up in around Scranton. She'll be able okay, to speak so to that. Okay, so that someone is going to testify to that this evening? Correct. 
All right, what about stormwater management plan? Pardon? Have you obtained a stormwater management plan? No, that is something that's dealt with later on in the entitlement and planning process. Now, with regard to, um, you start to talk about parking, you're going to have about 282 spaces. Just to be clear, the green space in front on North Washington Avenue, the soccer field, is going to be turned into cement parking, correct? Not cement, but it will be parking. Okay, fair enough. And then in the back, you're also going to be asking for a special exception so that you can create, I'm going to use the term cement, maybe concrete or some other form, parking closer to Meadowbrook Creek. Is that accurate? I don't know where you're referring well, to in the... This is all relevant. If, are we talking about Scranton or are we talking about them? I don't know, but they told me I'm allowed to talk about eight, all nine this, buildings here this, tonight. The stream doesn't hit um, the property in Scranton. <laughs> um, if, According to the Penn DEP. <laughs> all right, let me go back to my original question. The stream that we believe does hit Scranton because it's involved, been involved in a long litigation with the city of Scranton, Nonetheless, you're asking to create a parking lot closer to that stream. Is that correct? Uh, I'm asking her. Please, Bill. If I can, one, my objection goes. Uh, Meadowbrook Creek starts in Dunmore. It goes all through the city of Scranton. It uh. ends up down on Myler Avenue and goes into the Lackawanna River. Uh, the portion of Meadowbrook Creek that, on our property is in Dunmore. But that being said, we have an engineer here that could actually address the technical questions, and I'll ask him that myself. Uh, so is Hillary telling me that she doesn't know, or are you telling me that Hillary doesn't know? Because it's a speaking objection as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's, one, it's, it's not relevant. They've already ruled that the uh, uh, material, we hit the parking requirements in Scranton on the Scranton site. This is off the Scranton site. That all being said, I have an engineer that can actually provide testimony, relevant testimony as to that. But to the extent that you know anything with regard to it, go right ahead. Yeah, to my understanding, there a 30-foot step setback from the stream is required. And according to the plans that we have seen um, from Penn DEP, which Jerry will speak to more, and where we're proposing parking um, in Dunmore, we do not encroach on that 30-foot setback. You're asking for a special exception for it. It says in your paperwork. Bill, so I don't. Uh, right. did Dan, did we really care about parking in Dunmore well, for? When it's close to Meadowbrook Creek, creek and it, the creek runs through Scranton. Um, <laughs> not, not on this project. Yeah, Bill. All right, I'm wait for the engineer to maybe comment on that. Uh, Hillary, architect. Oh, I, okay. Hillary, is there any time frame for the completion of the eight other buildings once the front building is done? Yes, we plan to do all nine buildings together. We've never said we were going to do one building without the others. And in discussions with you, we offered the GRC, we offered to start construction on four of the eight Dunmore buildings before we opened up building one. That was just for the board's information. That was a compromise we were willing to make with them. Um, it was one of the many compromises that wasn't sufficient. And by no means are we planning to do building one and not do the other buildings we are planning to do the whole project together as an integrative project. It doesn't work unless the whole project is done together with the uses that we are proposing. Hello, were you involved in the email that was sent to me saying that you and your team would only sign off on any type of an agreement if I, on behalf of my committee, signed off on every resident in Greenridge so that nobody could ever go and fight at the Planning Commission, at the liquor license, the city engineer. I had the email to prove it. Are you familiar with that? Well, were you part of the email? I don't find it relevant, but I Mrs. Would Dempsey, like could you back away just a little bit from the from microphone? The microphone oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. What do you want me to do? Oh, okay. Okay. Is that better? Uh, I'm I, here presenting a case, so what we're looking at is how something got settled. So well, so I think she spent she yeah, spent I, ten minutes on it. I, I didn't I mean, really I think, think about it. Attorney, Attorney Jones, I think what the stenographer asks is that when you speak, you take it. 
the microphone and when she speaks she takes it because right thank you <laughs> okay um hillary for the people that you are planning to have as residents of the facility is it fair to say that um, they will need to move their vehicles between the hours of 12 p.m. and 6 a.m.? No, I don't know where that, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Okay, so 12 p.m. is lunchtime and 6 a.m. is in the morning. Do you think there is a fair chance that the people who reside at your property will need to move their vehicles during that time, perhaps to go to work, to go out for an event in the evening? Oh, well, if they're going to leave their property, yes, and they're going to be driving somewhere to leave the property, they're going to have to take their vehicle. <laughs> During those time frames. I already actually forgotten the time frames that you mentioned, if you could so repeat. Was, sure, I can. It's 12 p.m. to 6 a.m. I mean, I would say that if anyone's going to leave the property in their vehicle, they'll be taking it at all times of the day. That's okay. part of living and working and I don't know. And as you have it set up now, all entry and all exit will be on North Washington Avenue. Is that correct? No. Where is the other entry and exit? The loading dock? Jefferson. The one that's closed and is one way when it opens up? Pardon? Jefferson Avenue that's closed right now? If, if we can. There's it, Jefferson Avenue is a uh, thoroughfare in the borough of Dunmore uh, presently only because I drove out there yesterday. They're replacing the bridge on it. We're not going to be open before the bridge is done. Okay, but so. Do, that, that has always been an entrance and exit for this facility. I don't know if that facilitates moving it. it it's just an right. interesting dynamic because I'm asking a question of a person and I'm getting an answer right. from I the attorney. Right. I, I, I'd, I'd like to hear where, where, are the, where is the entrance and where is the exit? Well, right now we have an entrance in Scranton, which is the North Washington driveway. Mm -hmm. We have the Jefferson and there is a small entry on Evelyn Street because there will be a bit parking there, so uh, they'll have to use that to get to the parking. Could you could there. you show us on your, your display here? Okay, so now that's the that's the entrance. Where are the exits? I was just, that's what I was just asking. Are they entrances and exits? Are yes. they both you can enter and exit from the same? Yes. Hillary, um, Evelyn Street, have, you and I can agree that that cannot take two cars at one time. Is that correct? Um, our traffic engineer who's here um, says that the street is actually, she'll speak to this more, is 18 feet wide, I believe, and that is technically a two-way road. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Okay. I have no further questions. I have. If I can, just a few uh, follow-up. With regard to the uh, entrance and exit on North Washington Avenue, Hillary, is, has that always been there serving this particular facility? Yes. And with regard to the entrance and exit on Jefferson Avenue, has that always been there? For I this believe facility? so, yes. And with regard to the entrance and exit for at Evelyn Street, has that always been there servicing this facility? I believe so, yes. Okay. The small yeah, area in the chance. back that's used to access the property, is that a paved area off of Evelyn Street? Yeah, to the best of my understanding, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Guys, you'll have a chance to speak when you come up. Please do not speak from the audience. If I can, I'd like to call my uh, next witness. You raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. My name is Jerry Gutierrez, 449 South 43rd Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am owner, managing principal, and project manager for Group G Architecture and Planning, offices in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. G U T I E R R E Z. Thank you. Sir, do you have any licenses from the state of Pennsylvania, and if so, what disciplines? 
I'm licensed as an architect in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as well as a few other states, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you've heard the uh, testimony of Ms. Levitt, is that correct? You were here today? Yes. And you're familiar with the uh, master plan? I am. And if you could, could you uh, please uh, describe uh, for the uh, board, the, uh, beginning with building number one, what's demonstrated on that particular plan? So what you see here is basically the, the um, overall plan for the entire campus, which is bounded by North Washington, Electric, Jefferson, and Evelyn. Um, in any adaptive reuse projects that our office has done, and we've done a lot of adaptive reuse projects uh, over the course of our 25, 28 year history, uh, a lot of them in historical districts, um, We've done over a dozen projects of adaptive reuse at the Philadelphia Navy Yard as well as some other locations. Um, what we try to do is we look at the existing structures that are in place on the, on the site and we try to understand what, what va what's the value that's available to us to recoup, to maintain, that we can restore, that we can build from. And we try to align that approach with our client's approach, which in this case is brick. And they are interested in introducing and breathing new life into properties like this. And so when we look at this property with uh, Hillary and Lance, we saw a beautiful piece of property, very gracious, uh, covered with landscaping, uh, a very nice place to walk around nice place to live. We can envision people wanting to come live here. Um, there, was some, there was some hesitation about what we can have in all of these properties. Those are the buildings that were built in the 1800s. Um, because of their previous uses, they were actually configured as dormitories, apartments, small apartments. So they were very much aligned with the idea that those could be readily developed as multifamily residential. But in any of brick investments projects that deal with projects of this magnitude, what we look for are primal in a way. It starts with these buildings, which is shelter. And along with shelter, we, we think about people living in those buildings. So when people are together, there's community, and in community there are stories, there's songs, but then we also think about what do those people need? They need food, they need a place to gather. And that's where building one comes in. I know that Hillary mentioned earlier that because of the location of building one, it presents itself at the very front of the property along North Washington Avenue. So it becomes the face of the development. It becomes, in a sense, the living room, the entrance foyer, the kitchen, the dining room for the entire development. And we, when we talk about living room, dining room, kitchen, that's where we want the public to come in. That's where we want to present uh, other uses that are compatible and create synergy with the residential portions of the development, which is why building one becomes a linchpin for the development. It creates the energy and life that the residents can be part of, as well as an ability for building one and the areas around it to provide a common gathering space, not just for the residents, but also for people from the community to come and enjoy the amenities that Hillary mentioned the coffee bar, small restaurant with a little bar. Uh, the courtyard uh, can serve as additional amenity spaces and an ability to have live work and offices up on the upper floors. These are all standard semi-public public spaces that allow community to gather from the public as well as 
the residential community that's in the other buildings. It's also, this corner presents itself as well as a natural place to provide additional parking because we understood that based on both Scranton and Dunmore zoning code for the uses that we were exploring that we needed to provide additional parking. In looking at the entire property, uh, given that Meadow, Meadowbrook has a topography that's not conducive to developing parking nor building, we felt that the most logical place to provide parking is this corner, which is currently a play field. It's flat, but it's also high above the street on North Washington as well as Jefferson or Electric. Um, it's currently uh, planted, a little bit of planting is present along that edge, and we plan to enhance that planting with additional trees as well as an understory of shrubbery that's about three to four feet. So, in any case, we see that um, the topography of that level land is approximately six to eight feet, depending on where you are along the road here. Six to eight feet above the road, and with additional landscaping and tree planting, the cars that will be in that parking lot will hardly be visible from the street. As Hillary mentioned, we have primary access and egress from the property in North Washington. This is the existing driveway. From there, it's a logical place, even though there is an existing formal entry to the building off of North Washington, we felt that because we're because of most of our patients and visitors are coming in on North Washington Avenue, parking is here, so the logical place for an entrance is from the parking lot through a proposed small addition that straddles building one and leads off to the existing tunnel and closed walkways to the other buildings. Any questions so far? So again, we're providing enhanced landscaping. We, wanna, we really want to play up that this is, has a bucolic environment. Uh, we don't want to take away from that. We want to actually add and enhance what's already there. So we're adding landscaping along the street edges. We're also adding landscaping along Evelyn Street. Okay. I, I, will, I would like to take a moment to um, uh, speak on the floodway. Um, we did add some additional parking. Along. There is existing parking, but we added additional parking here. We see that as um, satellite parking for employees of the campus. We had early conversations with uh, the county, uh, Department of Environmental Protection, who referred us to the Commonwealth, a uh, DEP, uh, re relative to the floodway. Uh, in discussing, they provided to us the footprint of the existing floodway, which we superimposed on this plan. And they said to us that if we were to move forward, we would have to submit technical drawings to them so that they can, and we would have to survey the property because the information they gave us for that floodway that FEMA developed was about 20, 25 years old. And given the period of time and the way nature works, this floodway footprint might have changed since then. So we would have to provide a new survey of that floodway so that we, when we submit technical drawings to uh, DEP, they can confirm that we are compliant with uh, the floodway system. Okay? Any questions so far? Uh, from this point on, I, I want to walk you through, even though Hillary gave you some idea of the configuration of the building and the uses, I would like to... If I can, just for the purposes of the record, we're referring to the uh, master plan 
uh, that has been marked as an exhibit and distributed to the board as well as to uh, opposing counsel and I believe we're on page two of that. Thank you. So what you see here on this board, and I think you have that on your left, my 17th, we have the floor plan of the first floor. And as you can see, in, in, in extending how we look at the site, we also look at the buildings in terms of what, what is it offering us? What are its available strengths that we can enhance on that can add value to the development that can provide the synergy and the life for the entire building as well as the development. One of the things that we saw was that there's this, this floor was used in the cafeteria. It has a really, really large industrial commercial size kitchen. We've done a lot of restaurants. And our typical ratio of restaurant dining area and kitchen is that kitchens are typically a third of the dining area. In this case, our restaurant is a little less than the kitchen. The kitchen is larger than the restaurant. So in this case, having done kitchen design in restaurants, this is, in a sense, a gold nugget. This represents in money, in cost of construction, this represents about $600,000 worth of construction. Okay. So we accepted that that was a really, really good thing for the building and potentially for the entire development, which is why the restaurant is located at this corner because it provides a connection to the existing kitchen. It provides a connection to an event gallery space, which is wide open, flexible. It also provides a connection to be able to spill out into this courtyard outside between building one and building nine. So those are good things that we saw about this building. Building uh, floors two and three actually offer very similar floor plans. And in this case, again, we saw the value in how it was currently configured. There's a central hallway, you see here in yellow, that connects an existing stair enclosure on both ends. There's an existing elevator in the middle. Classic double loaded corridor. What we saw there was an opportunity to maintain that corridor, maintain the construction, maintain the construction of that corridor, and try to maintain as much of the existing classrooms slash offices, as well as restrooms that are already in place. We knew that we would have to add a little bit more to support the live work units, but the cost to develop this building into something that works really well, hand in hand with the rest of the property, was just, it was too natural, it was too logical to move away from. It's actually a series of images. These are three-dimensional images, sort of character images. This is at a very early stage of design, this is what we envision it might look like as you walk through or as you arrive at the building. So if you look at image one, you're really looking, if you're northbound on Washington Avenue, you're looking towards building one and you can see some of the enhanced landscaping that we're seeing along the edge. You're going to see a, a ground sign that announces that this is Marywood South. You turn here for the primary entrance. And then as you turn off that primary entrance, you will see the proposed entry pavilion. This entry pavilion will be a marker for the entire development. This will allow you to get into the restaurant as well as to the rest of the enclosed walkways. If I can, you reference that as the entrance to it. And I know on page one of the master plan, uh, in describing these buildings, there are nine buildings, is that correct? And they're all interconnected, is that yes. correct? 
And is that uh, something that historically grew out of the fact that this was the oral school and uh, I believe for whatever handicap uh, reasons, all these buildings are interconnected, is that That's correct? correct? And with regard to the heating systems uh, for the, uh, uh, some of the buildings that are, if we can look at page one of the master plan, if I were to take a look at, uh, say, buildings two through nine, they share a, a common heating system. Would that be correct? There's an underground steam tunnel uh, that connects all the buildings. All right. And uh, with regard to the uh, uh, other utilities for that, are they all shared on site? Are the buildings interconnected with regard to that? Uh, they currently are, yes. Okay, now, what, just overall, and I didn't mean to interrupt your testimony, just so they have a flavor for it. You're familiar with the condition of all these buildings, is that correct? Uh, so, I can't hear you. Oh, I, my apologies. You're familiar with the buildings, is that correct? Generally speaking, yes. All righty. Now, uh, with regard to the, uh, the buildings themselves, how would you describe their condition? I've seen buildings, and specifically I've seen buildings uh, from different cities, and I would say that I was amazed and really delighted to see that these buildings uh, have really, really good bones, but I, I've seen uh, windows broken in, uh, existing historic fabric, windows, doors that have suffered. Um, because some of, some of the windows have been opened, some 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 birds have come in, and uh, birds in buildings are 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 uh, not kind to floors. Um, so there, it, it's a it's a really wonderful cluster of buildings, a lot of character, very worthwhile preserving and restoring. Now, with regard to the. Uh particular buildings that you've taken, well, you're familiar with the buildings on site. You're familiar with the uh, zoning ordinance for the city of Scranton, is that correct? That's correct. And with regard to this particular uh, property and the uses that are allowed, uh, have you formed an opinion as to whether those uses uh, could be adapted uh, for uh, use in these particular buildings? Sure. That, that was one of the first uh, pieces of uh, research and analysis that we did not just for this project, for any project we undertake for adaptive reuse. We look at the existing zoning. We look at what buy right uses are available to us. And we try to understand what would it take from a, con from a design and construction standpoint to develop the property, in this case the building, so that it would be fully compliant with the current zoning code. Uh, I know that given the uses that are in INSI, a lot of them are um, a lot of them are intensive in terms of um, needing requiring higher levels of finishes and fixtures because of the institutional and what I call boutique uses, and I refer to care and treatment centers for children. Um, healthcare related uh, uses such as offices, administrative functions for healthcare institutions, colleges or university. These are all uses that are requiring very durable materials and systems because a lot of people will walk through that building and they will be used intensively. So the, it requires a higher level, more expensive materials and systems. Um, Can you explain to the board what that means? I know you've explained it to me, but... Uh. Sure. For example, if we're talking about corridors and these types of uses, we're looking at either um, stone or hard, hard flooring. Carpet, you're going to have to replace that every year. So there's a labor charge, there's a material charge and all of those things. Uh, walls get dinged up. There's a maintenance aspect as well to these types of uses because there's turnover and people that come and go. Public, public use that's not familiar with these facilities, they don't really pay attention and they don't really care um, about whether they're going to turn the corner and ding the corner. So there's a lot of maintenance associated with these types of uses. Um, we talk about 
um, special building systems that are required for healthcare related uses. Um, highly technical, uh, they need to be supported plumbing wise, electrically as well as HVAC, again adding uh, cost to the construction. Um, when we talk about um, home, group homes, um, we talk about requiring further subdivision of existing spaces. So we're talking about new walls, and where we have new walls, we have more doors. More doors and more walls means that we have to serve each individual space with heating and air conditioning, so more ductwork. So there's a, there's a layering that happens as you move through a lot of the uses that are by right under the zoning designation. Uh, all of these things add much more cost than, than what we have proposed. We're reusing a lot of the existing walls. We're reusing a lot of the existing bathrooms. Um, there's just a lot of, of uh, things that we see value that's already there that also works really well with the rest of the development. What would the average uh, cost for the existing building, say building one, with regard to any of the uh, permitted uses? Have you formed an opinion on that? Sure. Uh, I'm going to object to Ralph speculation and foundation. Well, he's an architect. It, I imagine, okay. it, it, if I can, in the course of your business, you uh, actually uh, form opinions with regard to adaptive reuses of buildings, is that correct? That's correct. Would it be fair to say that's pro probably primarily what you do for a living? That's about 75-80% of our core practice. Okay, so I'm going to reiterate my uh, uh, question with regard to, say, building number one on this site. Uh, have you formed an opinion as to the average cost for the renovation or reuse of the existing building? Uh, for any of the uses that are outlined in the City of Scranton zoning ordinance. Uh, same objection is to add relevance. Oh, well, it's the basis we're gonna, of my. We're going to allow it. We're going to allow it. Go ahead. It's not our problem. It, I said we are allowing it. I would just ask him to itemize the difference. Like, for example, a senior center is going to have a different cost than, you know, right. as he spoke of, yeah, the, I think that requires the ducting and things like that. Are we talking about the cost of this particular building? It, yes. Uh, well, first, let me lay my foundation for it. Yeah. Uh, with regard to uh, adaptive reuses for the building, uh, generally, what are the uh, costs for an existing structure? Sure. Well, this structure, building number one. So for any structure, and specifically this structure, we look at code issues. Uh, we have to first comply with current building codes, life safety codes, as well as uh, the technical codes, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, fire protection. Those are all things that are basic things that we have to comply with. Okay? So there's a layer of cost associated with that that starts at, in this case, because we're reusing a lot of the systems that are already in place, our cost for systems, building systems infrastructure is lower than what it would be if we introduced a different kind of use that may not use because of the way it's laid out, because of how uh, their, their, their requirements may be greater than the requirements that we have here. This is a very low, low need, low supply use. Okay? By that you're saying your proposed uses are low supply uses. That's correct. Now, That's correct. harkening back to the uh, zoning ordinance and the particular uses uh, that are allowed as of right, what would the cost of the uh, uh, to refit for any of those particular uses? Sure, I think you're. you're yeah, yeah I, I'm going to. I'm going to say there's a number of uses that could be in an R1 uh, or what, whatever we in here. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. If you so, uh, would you. I, I don't see the relevance of that. I'm going to. I'm going to sustain if that. If I can, objection. just as an offer of proof with regard to a variance, the uh, building itself. Uh, if one of the issues that this board is going to have to decide is can any of the uses that are allowed in this particular district be retrofitted into this building? And the case law allows that if you can put those in there, if they are not cost effective, then they are not allowed. That's, that's it. That's why we're here today. 
That's the primary issue. That goes to the variance. That goes to the validity variance. Uh, you, can, you can ask that particular question. Well, that was it. Consider it asked. What is it? Can we restate the question? Yes. With, with regard, you're familiar with the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes. And you're familiar with the uh, particular uses in that zone. In fact, if I may approach the witness. I'm going to hand you a section of the uh, zoning ordinance. <laughs> Have you taken a look at those particular uses? I have. Okay. Now, with regard to those particular uses that are allowed as of right, you're familiar, and I, I think you've testified to it, but uh, so that we could all follow you that are not architects in the room, uh, you've talked about group homes. Is that one of the uses that's allowed there? Yes. All righty. And you've also talked about care and treatment centers for children. Is that correct? Yes. And you've ta also talked about, uh, I would presume, offices, administrative, uh, and health care institutions uh, for colleges and universities. Yes. And uh, in, I would ask you also to uh, consider, uh, it has membership clubs. Are you, are you familiar with that? And does your testimony go to that? Can you clarify membership club? What was that? Membership club. Can you? Mem membership club. Uh, well, it's not specifically defined, but by that I would say, yeah, I guess a country club of some sort, or uh, I know there's the downtown athletic club in your city of Philadelphia. Okay. I've seen it. It has a nice yep. swimming pool, eating facilities, yep. et cetera. Yep. Uh, and I believe you can sleep in that particular uh, yep. amenity. Very, very familiar. Union League, Philadelphia Racquet Club. And also uh, places of worship with regard to that. Uh, additionally, cultural center. So you've taken a look at all of these uses, and if I've missed any, please uh, uh, correct me. Now, with regard to these particular uses, can they, would you have to retrofit this building for those uses? And if so, why? And what would it cost? Well. Well, that's, well, that's why, why I'm we, here. Why don't we just ask him, is it economically feasible to, to retrofit this building yeah. for any of those uses if you would. and be done it, with it? Would it be feasible to retrofit this building for any of those uses that you presently, that are allowed as of right? Or, and if so, what would it cost? I think what I can tell you is how much the range of the costs associated with converting this existing building to accommodate the uses that are by right. Yes, okay. that's what Mr. Penetar is In terms of whether asking. it's feasible, uh, that's, that's, that's a different question. Uh, I stand corrected. If you would please give us the, uh, within your discipline, the cost. Right. So with these types of uses, uh, we're looking at a range of 90 to $120 a square foot. So at 33,000 square feet and some change, that's about four to five million dollars, I believe. I, I don't have my calculator with me, but uh, that's about what it would take. And that doesn't include what we call soft costs, which are design and engineering fees. And there is a greater amount of money that is associated relative to the maintenance and operations of these types of buildings that are often greater than the initial upfront cost of construction and design. And I believe that's what you said were finishing costs in higher use. By that, you mean group homes, membership clubs, care and treatment facilities, cultural centers, uh, offices of whatever type, places of worship, that there are high traffic areas as opposed to the uses that we're proposing. Is that correct? That's correct. And that impacts upon the materials and the, then the material cost. Is that what you were getting at? That is correct. All righty. Now, with regard to the uh, uh, specialized system and finishing costs, there, I take it you've concluded that they would be higher than our proposed uses? 
Yeah, I, I, think you, I think you made your point, yeah. Yeah, I think you made your point. Let's go to something else. Uh, if you would, and I, this is before we had digressed into this, if you would go back to your master plan and explain what is on the, I think you were through the first floor. I, uh, I think you described that there was the cafeteria area and a, uh, I guess a kitchen area of approximately $600,000 existing, correct? All righty. Uh, you've also talked about the uh, additional floors. If you want to pick up wherever you were at in your testimony, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I think we ended up here. Um, entrance to building one as well as entrance. If you turn right, you would move towards the rest of the buildings. Um, this entrance pavilion, and you can see this in the This entrance pavilion, you enter in this direction, so it will allow you to enter left into past the coffee bar, past the gallery space, and actually allow you to get into the restaurant, common restrooms, elevator. It will also allow you the ability to come through and be able to see and access the courtyard. And that's what you see Okay, here. Let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question on that. Sure. If that's the case, and your parking is on this, this side, the soccer field side, what, if any, entrance from North Washington Avenue is needed? Uh, that's, that's an operational question, I think, that I would have to defer to owner. Because it sounds like you're trying to make the entrance where that 1.11 is. That's your main entrance. Your parking is on that side, too. Uh, I don't, I don't, right. Why would anybody come in North Washington Avenue? Uh, if I can, uh, just to follow it, if you can go back to page one of the master plan. Right. Talking about this one? Or no, page one. The All right, can you point out uh, building number one? All righty, and can you show the uh, entrance off of the uh, parking lot that uh, is proposed? All righty, and if I can, we're looking at page one, so that would be uh, directly adjacent to the uh, parking lot. Does, does that answer your question, Dan? Well, that's why I said everybody's going to come in from the parking through that main entrance. Why would anybody come in from North Washington Avenue? Well, that, if you can, can you show Mr. Penatar where North Washington Avenue is? North Washington Avenue is here. I think you're referring to, to that entrance. Why would anybody come in that entrance? There's, there's no parking. There's no main entrance. Oh. If I can approach. Uh, North Washington Avenue is right here. Is that correct? That's correct. And it directly enters into the parking lot. That's correct. correct. That's correct. And the building number one is adjacent to that parking lot. That's correct. So if somebody was coming into, say, their apartment in building number one, they would come almost adjacent to the building number one and drive in. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and if they were going to go to the restaurant for building number one, would, would, would they come uh, in direct proximity to uh, North Washington Avenue and come into that? Right. All righty. Uh, if they were going to go to uh, a live-work facility on the second or third floor of this particular facility, uh, would they also come directly off of North Washington Avenue? vehicular traffic coming in off of North Washington, parking here. And once they park here, it's an easy connection to come That's to right. this property. Uh, I know we- That's we, right. Yeah. I think that the, the question is the there, other entrance in the center of the building that goes out to North Washington. Yeah, you'd, uh, you'd actually have to go out of your way to use that to entrance. Use that, to use that entrance. Misunderstood, I thought you meant for vehicular traffic. Oh, no, 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 for walking yeah. into the building. No, I, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I guess 
Uh, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm out of line, but I have another question. <laughs> no, but it, I understand the question. I thought you meant for vehicular traffic. No, I meant, I meant, I, I meant once you, what I wasn't catching. No, once, once you park and you get out of your car, you're going to go in that main entrance. There's no reason for you to go out to North Washington Avenue and come around. I don't see the, the necessity for having an entrance there. I understand your question. Though. Okay. The, the other question I have, and maybe this, he may or may not be able to answer it, and I'm just getting it, trying to get it in my head. This bar within the restaurant, is it more similar to a Sambucas setup where you have a bar and a separate uh, room for the, for the eating for the restaurant, or is it more similar to a Sibios type restaurant where you have the bar seating adjacent to the, the eating area itself. And maybe Hillary could answer the, that. She better, can, better if I that. can, I'd like to recall. Uh, I'm just trying to picture fine. this in They're, my mind, how, where we're, this we're bar We're here to answer is. the questions. Uh, I think I can ask you a question and I can show you. If you look at page six, and this is a view, if you're walking in, that is where the stuff walking in in this direction. So the first thing you'll see is the image of the restaurant, which is represented in view six. So that's what you'll see. So predominantly, it's an open dining room with tables and a palette. And then in the corner is a very short bar. You can see it here on the left. Okay, so it's not a separate room, it's within the restaurant itself. It's, it's more, more a Sibius type setup, in other words. If okay. you can, if we can, uh, I'd like to call Hillary so she can explain that. Obviously, that's a lot of people have a concern with regard to that. If you would, uh, Jerry did a good job explaining, but um, Attorney Penetar was actually at Sibio's earlier today, and so I just wanted to say that yes, okay. It, yeah. <laughs> okay, just so we so the board could picture it in their mind where this quote unquote bar is. Okay. Okay. My apologies, my field research was Scranton <laughs> bars and restaurants. You weren't with her at Sibios today, huh? <laughs> no. Are you done with the direct testimony? Oh, with, if I can have a moment. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the uh, particular uh, <laughs> Well, I think you've hit the, uh, the cost of it. Have you formed an opinion with regard to the uh, cost of building number one? Objection. Oh, with, well, we actually have it. Two is with regard to, and I will rephrase it, with regard to the uses that are in the particular ordinance. Have you uh, formed an opinion as to the, uh, I know you've given us a cost to it, is those by right? And if so, what if that? Uh, I, think, I think we already asked, asked and answered that. Well, I'm asking him for his opinion now. He did give the factual well, he, one. I'm just asking for the conclusion, which would be his opinion. Well, he, he, gave, a, he gave the conclusion. Well, I'd ask him to reiterate. Maybe I okay. missed that. But go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Answer. We, we have done some very preliminary pricing, and we call it cost opinion. Okay. Um, based on what we are able to save with building one's existing fabric, and that we're able to save a lot of the existing plumbing risers, uh, all the, a lot of the walls on the upper floors, uh, we estimate, in our opinion, that we're looking at a, a project that's about $50 a square foot. All right, and uh, with regard to any of the uh, uses, if we were to put those into the uh, structure, you've given a number for that. Would you say they're cost effective, cost prohibitive, cost neutral? The buy right uses? Yes. I think I gave that earlier, but I repeated it. It's, it's about 90 to $120 a square foot. And with regard to uh, the entire building, if you, what would it run us? I'm sorry? What would it cost us? Uh, if, we, if we're looking at the $50 per square foot for, as indicated here, right, um, uh, 
we're looking at about 1.6, 1.7. Thank you. Million, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Gutierrez. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Um, my first question is to the parking lot in the corner where the former soccer field would be. Um, where would the water drain? I'm sorry? Where would water drain from that area of the parking lot? So we're, we're in our early stages of design. However, we're very sensitive to stormwater. Uh, it's something that we practice in our office. It's a requirement for a lot of our bigger projects. Um, so in dealing with stormwater, traditionally, we could do this as a tradi traditional concrete lot, but we'd prefer to move towards what we call permeable paving. We can even do recycled asphalt. That will allow stormwater to actually be slowly absorbed back into the ground instead of being released suddenly into your current infrastructures. So permeable paving is actually a much more des desirable solution in this case. And when it permeates through the parking lot, where would it go? It goes into the ground. That's where it goes right now. And when the ground is filled, where would then the water go? Where it goes right now. To the... It goes into the ground. Right. Since water runs downhill to the quickest waterway, go to Meadowbrook Creek? It probably goes to Medical Meadowbrook. Okay. Meadowbrook. Have you submitted the technical plans to DEP? We are not at that stage yet. Okay. Could you do that at the same time you could, uh, the Planning Commission could have its time to review? That is something that our client will have to decide on. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I can go to the, um, sorry, my notes are a little messy. My apologies. If we can go to the um, zoning attachment three um, that Attorney Jones gave all of us. If we can talk just between the differences of why one is 90 square feet and one is 50 square feet, if you can just walk me through that. Because I'm looking at number one, um, you know, a care center for children. Let's say we took off the restaurant and had that event space be a care center for children. How would that be more expensive? Well, there's a cost damage. There's a cost of that. You would, you would, you couldn't use it as a void space, such as a storage area. You'd have to demo demo that whole side of the building, the whole restaurant area. As a as a child care center. As a child care. Right. So there's there's gas here. There's wood, there's dust work. Uh, the, the floor is for a very hard surface. Not conducive to your chapters. So I have to remove the floor finishes and remove all the dust work, put equipment, plumbing, all of that is to go away. There's why does it have to go away? That's my question. Is why can't we just cordon it off, turn off the gas, not use that part of the building? So maybe not use Correct. And where were the daycares? In the event space. In the space. In the upper floors. Correct. Okay. We design child care centers. We need to provide restrooms for the children. We need to provide quiet sleeping rooms for the children. We need to allow for secure check in, check out process, outdoor play, playground uh, areas. Those are all things that. Then we have to get approval from the state licensing for all of that. So there's, there's a level of design and construction that takes place to allow some uses like that to be incorporated. Um, we typically won't do it here. I, I would I would write that in here. That's a different matter. So if we can go on to a community center, um, such as a senior center where the where the kitchen is used to serve hot meals to the to the seniors and you do have access to the bathrooms both for the daycare and the senior center through the elevators you'll have to have them for your restaurant I imagine and for your event space if you have 150 people there they're going to need to use the restroom correct I, I'm just gonna uh, if I can just get a foundation if we're using the whole first floor for a daycare and it, it I would like to know where the cost difference is 
Uh, like yeah, it seems like the exact same plan, except for just different people, children and seniors, opposed to um, consumers. I'm just asking for a foundation. What floor are we on, and what space are we talking about? That's all. As for the daycare, you could use the upper rooms for the sleeping. You could use the upper rooms for arts and crafts. Same with the senior center. Yeah, I think we understand that the space could be used for other, other things. I mean, I think we understand that. Right. And I'm just trying to understand exactly where the cost difference is because it seems I like if they were I don't think the cost difference the matters much to us. If I may, just one more for the record. The event space, could that be used as a museum or aren't those almost identical uses? as a gallery, because I remember one time in one of these records it being a gallery. Wouldn't that be the same as a museum of sorts? You're gonna have to go back to the microphone, please. I teach design at the University of the Arts Museum and exhibit planning design. Um, this is not a good space for museums. Um, one, there's a lot of glass. Um, it's not a very secure place, and a museum is static. It doesn't allow people to come and go and gather, okay? which doesn't allow us to have, to build the energy and vitality that's conducive to working with the rest of the development, okay? I'm, we're only talking about this specific building, though, is my understanding. We're not talking about the rest of the development. Is that correct? Are we opening the door to that? Because then if that's so, I'd like to know if you've gone to the Dunmore Planning Commission, the Regional Planning Commission. If we're talking about the entirety of the project, then perhaps we well, should talk any, to those Anything we well. do here is contingent on Dunmore also approving it. It is contingent? Sure, because if he can't, he's telling us he can't develop the whole thing. Can we he can't develop that? one building without developing the entire project. I believe that was one of our conditions that we recommended in the first hearing of sorts, mm -hmm. is that there be a condition on the variance as going to the Dunmore Planning Commission, going to the regional, if necessary, going to the city engineer to see about the stormwater. If I can, and I don't mean to interrupt Cross, as part of the saldo practice, your ordinance and the one in Dunmore, we have to do all of those things. They're the development side of it. Uh, I know you don't do that, but the same people that sit up there for planning, and ultimately it goes to council. And it's the same thing in the borough of Dunmore. We have to do that for stormwater. You have a stormwater ordinance, so we have to design all of that. We take all of our uh, plans. Uh, they generally go to the planning commissions first uh, for any approvals. Sometimes they actually have the approval authority. Sometimes it goes to the next level. So with regard to that, we're not there yet. We just need the zoning relief. Right. Then, I, then we do the land plan and we hit all of those. I agree wholeheartedly. We're putting the cart before the horse. We need to have a review from the planning commission first. Well, That's well, what I'm We hearing. already uh, agree that we're not going to vote tonight. We're not going to vote on this and, tonight. If I could interject on behalf of the, the planning commission, the planning commission will review this outside of the zoning process. What what's been asked for is for the zone or for the planning commission to make a recommendation on the special exception that's on the zoning issue further down the road would be land development approval where all the civil engineering would have to be approved it would be reviewed by the city engineer that doesn't come in place until after zoning there would be no purpose to have them expend the funds on that if they don't know that they could do the use that's that's the, the I, typical procedure. I understand. I just also would like to know, though, how do we determine if there'll be adverse effects to our health and welfare as a neighborhood if we don't know anything about two through eight or two through nine buildings, two through nine, because we have very uh, obscure plans, se possibly seven event areas. Is that seven weddings going on at the same time? Like we don't know. Well, the planning and commission and will review it is. under our subdivision and land development ordinance. As part of that, stormwater will have to be reviewed. There'll have to be an NPDES permit issued by DEP. Uh, so even if they get the zoning approval, if they can't meet the approval standards of the subdivision land development ordinance, the project won't go forward. So it makes sense to have these commissions be part of the zoning as a, as a condition to the zoning, that all of these all are met before changing it to a mixed use and changing our neighborhood. If they can't do the project, they can't do the project, and she would revert back to a residential or institutional light. 
typically a developer wouldn't spend the money to do that detailed engineering unless they know they have the approval under zoning. In that's, other words, this is step that's one. That's typical steps right. taken. Right. But without Dunmore? Dunmore, uh, my understanding of the law, when a, when a land development crosses two municipalities, both municipalities have to approve it. Both municipalities get to review the application as if the whole project was in the city. So when it's before the Planning Commission of Scranton as a land development, they get to review the whole project as, as if the project was in Scranton. Dunmore gets to review the whole project as if the whole project was in Dunmore. Then we and would both would have to approve it. Then we would reiterate our request that there be a, a contingency on the variance. I'll continue with my, if, if you'd like. Um, you said that the building, building one was built in 1974? That's correct. And it has its own heating system? It does. And other than the covered um, walkway, is it any part, um, infrastructure-wise, part of the 1880 buildings? No. No. So it can be separate and apart on its own. doesn't have to necessarily survive or die with the other buildings. Any of the buildings could be disconnected from the infrastructure system. So theoretically, two through nine could be torn down or left or That's done away not, with, and it wouldn't affect building one. I'm talking about the infrastructure system. Right. Not demolishing yes. each building. Right. The infrastructure system of building one is separate. Like the steam tunnels, they are not dependent on the steam. In fact, okay. they may not want to be using steam. Correct. How, um, for building one, you mentioned that birds and broken windows and that sort of thing have, um, other than the good bones, have any, do you know of any birds? Um, are there, is there a bird problem in that building? Are there broken windows of that building? I, I haven't uh, gone in there for two or three months, but I, I think Hillary has, so I'll defer it to Hillary. If we can, if you have to answer the question. In my experience um, over the last many months, probably a year now, um, in the times that I've walked through that building, there are birds, um, there are broken tiles, there are broken windows. At one point, there was caution tape outside of the building, which I assume was uh, for safety of uh, bricks potentially falling. Um, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of the owner. They've seen a lot of buildings um, that have been blighted, and you know, it, there's difficult to keep up the maintenance because that's old and it's expensive to do so. Um, and they believe that it's right at, these buildings are right at that turning point where it's just gonna become extremely expensive um, if they're kind of left any longer without someone paying attention to they them. Use the plural buildings. Um, what condition is building one, especially because it's a newer 1974, is building it Building one is in poor condition as well. I wouldn't say it's as bad, but it's also in poor condition. All right, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. If I can just to follow up with regard to uh, building number one, if you would. It, are these buildings interconnected? Yes, all of them are connected. It, was there a reason for that? Yeah, I'm under the um, understanding um, that all the buildings were connected because it was a school and there were safety concerns for the children that attended the school. Um, and so they connected all the buildings as a safe way for the children and students and their visitors to move throughout the buildings. Um, and they could reach all of them, I guess, indoors. Thank you. I have three very quick questions for the ar architect. Am I right? Did I get that architect? Um, you're also adding an addition onto building one. Is that correct? That's correct. And what, what about the addition? What's that going to be? How big is that? What about the aesthetic of that? What about the, I'm sorry? Aesthetic. The aesthetic. So it's a one-story addition, it's high ceilings, okay, because we have to straddle uh, above the existing roof of the enclosed walkway. Um, it also allows us to bring a lot of light in from the courtyard into that entrance area. So we see that as a very open and transparent space that allows people entering through the entry pavilion to see the courtyard beyond as well as to be able to navigate past the coffee bar. And from the maps you provided, it appears as if that addition faces North Washington Avenue? Uh, let me go to the map. Sure. Map. Okay. Thank you. 
So this is the addition. Correct. It's a triangular addition. Okay. So this face of it faces the parking lot. Right. Okay. And the diagonal side opens out towards the courtyard. Okay. So this side of it actually you won't see it because it's underneath the second floor of building one. We just look we just form the footprint on the first floor. So okay. this is what you'll actually see on the first floor. Okay. Is it pretty much just a vestibule? I'm sorry? Is it pretty much just a vestibule? Basically it is. Thank it's you. a big vestibule. Thank you. It's 700 feet. Uh, let me see. It's about, it's almost 1,200 square feet. Okay. And then I have a quick question for you on parking. You were talking to Sam very briefly about the front parking lot. And you said that as part of your job, you're also very familiar with the zoning code. Um, in the paperwork that has been submitted, there has been a request for a special exception for a parking lot to be closer to the creek. Are you familiar with that request? Uh, let's see. That might have to do with this part of our parking. Okay. And then this, is, this is the only parking area that's close to the creek. Okay, thank you. And then one step further, are you also familiar with Section 504B of the Scranton Zoning Ordinance that says no new paved area shall be within 75% of the center of the following creeks and they list Meadowbrook Creek specifically. If I uh, uh, let him ask, answer the question. No, I'm going to object. One, Meadowbrook Creek that we have on our plan is not in the city of Scranton, so it, it's not relevant. But you, you said I want to talk about Dunmore and Scranton tonight. The, all the buildings we talked about. So far, they've interjected that we're asking for a special exception near a creek that's not in the city of Scranton. Uh, we're not asking. The water runs into the city of Scranton. The water runs into the homes of some of these people sitting back here. I'd like an answer to the question, please. If I can, we're not asking for any parking in the city of Scranton near the creek. So what relevance does this have to a parking area that's in Dunmore that he's testified to we're going to comply with the regulations and the regulations of the state of Pennsylvania. I, if, if I can get a ruling from the solicitor. I, I, I think you're right. I'm going to I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay, and then one final question. Were you at Sibios for lunch today as well? <laughs> no, I was not. You weren't? No. Thank you. If I could have a follow up why not? I wasn't invited. Uh, <laughs> Do you know who was? Okay, thank you. If I may just have one question. When I have looked at the maps before, and this is toward um, Attorney Penitar, when I've looked at maps before in regards to Meadowbrook Creek, it still is a creek even though it goes underneath mm -hmm. the ground. I and, agree with it. Okay, so with that question, where the creek continues in Scranton, does that parking lot in the corner have the appropriate offset that uh, Attorney Dempsey just if, Explain. If I can, just by way of foundation, if we can, if I can have a determination as to well, where where are the dimensions and where is this underground creek, it, I, I I can't fathom in my own mind how I'm going to get an answer to this. But uh, where is the underground creek? But perhaps a city engineer might be able to help you with no, that. No, no, I'm here tonight. So if there's mm -hmm. a question to my witness about an underground creek that purportedly is somewhere well, I, I, again, property. the water runoff is going to be handled by the planning commission as as. Uh, Don King said. Okay. And I, I, I believe the creek, at least where it crosses Electric Street, is shown on the on the master plan where it goes underground. Okay. And uh, it looks like they stop at the other side of Electric Street, but they do show where it where it does go underground. In the Scranton. In the Scranton. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm sorry. It, it's still in Dunmore at that uh, point. On the plan we have, it's still in Dunmore. It didn't. Yeah. didn't it's going push the creek all the way down. Okay. We have no further questions. No further questions. Any other witnesses? Oh, yes. Please raise your uh, right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. 
Name and address, please. Anne Marie Vigilante, 1943 Detweiler Road. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Anne Marie Vigilante, V I G I L A N T E, 1943 Detweiler Road, Harleysville, PA, 19438. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. I may, uh, I'd like to offer the. Uh, this number number seven there. Sure. I'm currently a senior associate and vice president of Lang and Engineering. Um, I oversee our traffic and transportation group in our Pennsylvania offices. I have 22 years of experience. I'm uh, a registered uh, professional engineer in four states, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and Delaware. I have no objection. I'll stipulate her credentials. Okay. Thank you. If we can, because I'm quite proud of the fact of your accomplishments. Where are you from, Anne-Marie, originally? I'm originally from West Granton. Thank you very much. Karen Good Jones, can you pull that microphone over? <laughs> <laughs> Anne-Marie, are you acquainted with this particular site? I am. And could you please describe for the uh, board uh, the site? what you undertook with regard to this particular site? In terms of the traffic? Yes. Okay. Did you prepare a tra traffic assessment for this site? I did. I, uh, I prepared a uh, preliminary traffic assessment. And if I uh, you have a copy of it, I do. Know, I would ask that this be marked as number Can you describe the task associated with completing the uh, traffic assessment? Sure. So basically, um, our task was to uh, review the current concept plan for the redevelopment. Um, we researched uh, available traffic volume data and maps for the surrounding roads, um, prepared trip generation rates, compared the estimated site trip generation rate for the proposed uses with the previous use, and then we I identified potential applicable permit requirements proposed redevelopment. Can you describe the uh, potential uses in subsequent traffic generation associated with the redevelopment of this site? Sure. Um, Hillary kind of went through these earlier, um, but we looked at the potential uses on this site and the uh, proposed traffic generation associated with them. Um, basically 69 residential units, 13 offices um, with approximately uh, 3,444 square feet, 10 bed and breakfast units, um, 1620 square foot of restaurant uh, bar space, and some additional supplemental event space. For the purpose of our analysis, uh, we conservatively combined the bed and breakfast with the residential units, because ITE trip generation rates, um, there is none for bed and breakfast. So we combined the uh, bed and breakfast with the residential units, um, resulting in 79 units. Um, we also combine the restaurant and the bar area to uh, 1620 square foot of, of restaurant use, again, because that's what ITE trip generation rates um, exist. In terms of the trip generation, we anticipate a large portion of the restaurant site generated trips will be internal to the site. However, our numbers that I'm going to talk about here today do not include that. They assume that the um, trips will be all new trips. So we didn't look at internalization, which I'll talk to 
um, a little bit later. Um, and then also we assume the event space primarily used for the special events will not generate trips during the peak periods of the other uses on site. So mainly we're looking at um, the event space uh, like Friday and Saturday nights, which don't coincide with the peak period of the other uses, the residential, um, restaurant, things like that. Um, so looking at the combined site, this is uh, the uses in both Scranton and Dunmore. We're looking at a trip generation um, of 48 additional trips in the morning peak period and 55 additional trips in the evening peak period. So again, that's for the entire site combined. Um, what that kind of results in, to put it in a little bit more layman's terms, is approximately one new trip every minute, okay, for the entire site that would be generated across the entire site. Again, if you know anything about traffic engineering, trips is entering and exit, so that doesn't mean there's 48 new vehicles, it's um, 48 trips, so that results in 24 additional vehicles. And in the evening peak, you had 55 trips, so that's really 28 vehicles. So just to clarify that a little bit. When we looked at Scranton only, as what we're here for tonight, um, the morning peak hour trips is 24 additional trips, and the evening peak hour trips is 25. Um, that, you know, again, to put it in some terms that may make more sense, is a half a new trip per minute or one new trip every two minutes on the roadway network. We also looked at um, some historic research of the site as it existed back when it was the state school, and we did some trip generation for that site, assuming um, basically 74 students would uh, you know, um, attend that school. Um, and what we came out with is a difference in the existing trips compared to the new trips in a um, a negative of 11 trips in the morning, so it'd be 11 less trips than what the existing site was originally intended for, and then an additional 42 for the evening peak period. In terms of the study, that we anticipate um, all of the trips to be new trips because the you know the state school has been um, closed down for a while, so we anticipate the new trips to be the 48 and the 55 total. Uh, throughout the roadway networks. We didn't take credit for the existing use. Um, in terms of the special event space, um, as you know, this will be um, trips associated with that space when it's rented out as you know, an art show, weddings, business gatherings, etc. Um, in order to determine the potential trips associated with a special event, we looked at the most generous and the most conservative type of event that could happen there, and that's a wedding. So um, if you look at ITE rates, a wedding is the most um, you know, conservative of all these events. Looking at that, we looked at a few different capacity. Um, we looked at a 100-person capacity, a 200-person capacity, a 300-person capacity, and a 400-person capacity. Looking at the highest use, so the 400, basically 400 uh, people that could attend an event, we'll say at once, across the entire project, not just the Scranton portion of it, um, you're looking at 120 new trips that will be entering an hour before, and then 120 exiting an hour after. So if you think about it, these trips aren't on the road the entire time the event's going on. Just like a wedding, you have people coming a little ways before and then leaving after, and it all disperses. Um, so again, those trips we anticipate would be off-peak from the other uses on site, the um, office, residential, things like that, because they typically are held on a Friday night, a Saturday. Saturday. Um, some other things to point out in the, um, the study we provided, um, we looked at the existing access point on North Washington Avenue. If we assumed all the trips for this entire project enter and exit that particular access point, um, you're looking at something like an anticipated 646 daily trips. Now that existing access point is currently designed and was at one time um, acting as a low volume driveway. A low volume driveway has the ability to accommodate up to 1,524 two-way trips. So if you think about it, our 646 
we're technically only utilizing 43% of the capacity of that actual driveway. So just something to think about when you're looking at the North Washington Avenue driveway. Um, and again, that would, in, that would assume that every trip that we are producing would use that entrance and exit. Um, another thing to, to mention in, in terms of when we talk about these trips is we, again, I, I stated this a little bit earlier, we did not talk about, or we did not assume any internalization to the site. And by that, I mean, you know, for the restaurant, uh, typically the uses uh, encompassed in the development, like the residential, the office, are going to be the main patrons of that restaurant. We don't anticipate a ton of outside uh, traffic um, uh, utilizing that restaurant space. Um, similarly, we did not take into account any of the um, multimodal split. And what I mean by that is some of the residents aren't going to have cars. They're going to rely on Ubers and Lyfts and bikes and buses. They're not actually going to be you know, using cars that will um, generate trips to that site. But again, our numbers are conservative, consuming, assuming everybody, every use, is you know, using um, uh, you know, a vehicle is generated by them. Um, so based on my knowledge of the capacity analysis and the traffic operations, I believe the site access for the proposed site can efficiently accommodate the projected number of trips with no adverse impacts to the surrounding roadway network. The number of projected site generated trips are not significant and will likely result in minimal delay and queuing for vehicles along the internal site driveway as well as along the local roads surrounding the project. So that's, in a nutshell, what the analysis um, walks through. I could take questions. Yes. I Ma'am, mean, I've been looking at your report. Did you ever go to the site? I did. How many times? Uh, throughout my... Um, no, for this project. For this site, um, maybe twice. Yeah, two times. Uh, Remember, I lived here for 25 years. Oh, what relevance oh, does that I'm have to this? I'm allowed to establish a foundation here because the word estimate, assume, anticipate have been used throughout this entire report. It's based on estimated data. Well, ITE traffic generation rates are estimated, and that's how a traffic study is prepared and mm -hmm. um, the numbers are calculated. Correct. So we, let's, you and I agree that the data you used is estimated. I'm going to object to that to this characterization. This board is aware of traffic generation goals by her. You've heard it. I didn't present it here in the last month. You used uh, accepted. I, th I think she explained how she. Okay. Uh, I think her, her explanation was fine. Uh, I would like an answer to the question, though. I, I, I gave you an answer. She, I am she, she, the, uh, the estimated trip generations is done by ITE trip generation rate, which is the known procedure that all traffic studies in Pennsylvania go by. Okay. 